Hello, gamers. Hello there. Hello, hello. Hope you're doing great. I have a bit of a headache coming on. I don't know why. Not sure why, but uh, yeah, that's where my life is right now. That's where my life is. Outside of that, I've got nothing interesting going on aside from Mushroom Man. Nice, dude. All right, we're back in Altus Plateau. We have a few bosses down here to take out. Three of them, to be exact. So that's what we're going to do to start off the day. That's what we're going to do to start off the day. I hope you guys are doing wonderful. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for tuning in. Shout out to everyone that took the time to watch the grounded videos that I put out yesterday and today. Hope you've enjoyed them. Well, they are re-uploads re from uh, my other channel, but... I'm trying to get more visibility on my channel here with videos, and I feel like that was a good place to start things off. So, feels good, man. Feels good, man. Also, I did play a little bit of Dark Souls 3 Arch Thrones mod. That mod is actually sick. It's actually really, really well done. It has unique bosses. It takes elements from all sorts of other Dark Souls and, and even Elden Ring. Like, some of the bosses have Elden Ring movesets and stuff. It's actually really good. It is extremely challenging as well. The scaling of everything is just, like, everything is just so tough. It's pretty cool, man. I really like it. I'm going to put a video out, it in the uh, out on my channel on it in the next couple of days. What build am I using? This is my Curved Sword Poison build. Hey, Rayfuzz, Elgernon, Fox, Pebbleson, Majin Kai, Mythic Blue, Proper Monkey, Eric. What's left to do on this playthrough? Um, a lot. I'm only in Altus Plateau right now. Majin Kai, Ludo Zeal, Just James, Coco. What's up, gamers? Hey, Po Mamba. What up, Joey? Just finished watching Vid from yesterday. YouTube did not notify me you were live. Just happened to see, the, see it after the vid ended. I guess because it was on your channel. Uh, YouTube is really finicky about notifications. I always recommend that if you're curious as to what's going on, make sure you visit my channel on the daily. So that way you're always able to stay up to date. YouTube gets real weird about putting out notifications. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video and thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'm doing all right, Joel. How are you? What up, enjoy, enjoy. I... <clears throat> I really, um, you know, I know why it exists, but I wish it didn't. The idea where when, if you, like, draw your stamina too low, your character will have a hard time running until it starts to, uh, you know, gets to, to a recovery point drives me nuts. Oh, I actually hit him midair. That was cool. Ah, stamina. Do I like Lord of the Rings? I do. I love Lord of the Rings. Quick question. Is the Knight Rider's Glaive a viable weapon or are there better halberds? I th I personally think that the Knight Rider's Glaive is the single best halberd in the game. It's extremely versatile. It has incredibly good scaling. You can put all sorts of cool Ash of Wars on it. Even like Ice Spear. Dude, Ice Spear on that, on that Glaive is really good. It is extremely good halberd. If you're going to use halberds at all, that would be one of the go-tos that I recommend. That, uh, Dragon Halberd, and um, Golden Halberd would be the, my top three. Question of life is Hobbit or Lord of the Rings? Why not both? The same universe and one story leads into the other. In, into the other. Why would you limit yourself to just one? The Hobbit is like a prequel of the main story, Lord of the Rings. Why not both, dude? Guardi oh yeah, Guardian Sword Spear is good too. I would I like Guardian Sword Spear for its scaling, but its moveset I do not like. 
Like, I think it's cool. It's got, like, a fancy flourish going on. But as far as effectiveness goes, the only real effectiveness out of it is its scaling with dexterity. It is really good in that regard. And I'll admit that I often forget about it. I just find it to be a very forgettable weapon. Hey, we got the imped cats. Good. Good. I don't know, but I prefer Hobbit because Lord of the Ring is quite depressing. I mean, yeah, the Hobbit has its depressing moments too, though. Gets true combos, good for PvP. Yeah, but I never consider anything as far as PvP goes. I find PvP in games like this to be so lackluster. Between uh, very problematic balance issues as well as the peer-to-peer -peer connection, I just don't find the value. Hey, Steve. If you enjoy it, that's cool. I just... Uh, I cannot. <laughs> I do not see the value in it. I, I, damn it. Come here. You're annoying. You must go. No hugs. You guys got lucky that guillotine didn't land on your head. What the? Why is Bloodborne your favorite FromSoft game? It's not. Armored Core 2 Another Age is my favorite FromSoft game. What up, Jake? I don't remember what this item is. But also, there's going to be a guy that spawns there. I don't think poison affects him, so let's go with the bleed. Oh my god, the damage is nuts. Already the damage is nuts, dude. Completely killed it before it could even do anything about it. The item was not worth it, though. It was not worth it. Want to see this guy get real mad? Watch. You just try to pay him a compliment. He gets real upset about it. Watch. What'd you say? What did you say to me, bitch? What did he say? Can I see your stats? Yeah, let me just uh, get through this fight real quick. Buddy. No, come on. Okay, hold on. Oh, 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 Buddy, you can't be doing this. Come on, man. go there you go can you imagine having that guy's job like your job is i'm basically going to turn your soul into a key for this door all you need to do is stay in this dungeon forever don't worry i'll pay you i'll pay you i'll bring you food it'll be fine but your job is your soul is the key should you die the door will open so don't die idiot And then, you know, whenever, years later, he proceeds to die, you get a notification on your phone saying that the door's been opened. So now the guy that you've been paying to keep the door closed with his soul key, you're all pissed off. Like, what the hell, man? I paid this guy good money and he failed me. I know, weird hypothetical situation going on in my head, right? 
taking out guard the door with my life too literal true i disagree what a weird hitbox I shouldn't have healed there. It's fine, though. Oh, I can't believe that missed. I'm out of mana. I will poison Moth Flight you. I will. Go ahead. Beat me up all you want. It's going to happen. I don't care what you do. Oh, you just signed your death warrant, friend. I'm sorry. Bye. I got to do it on principle now. I got to do it on absolute principle now. All right. Let me go ahead and show you my stats now. I didn't forget. Don't worry. What up, Igor? What are your expectations for the DLC? Many tough bosses. Probably some of the toughest bosses in the entire game. Anyway, here's my stats. When it comes to From Software DLC, I just, uh, the only expectation I ever have is just difficult bosses. That's all I want. The Erdtree medical plan does sound like a solid benefit. Yeah, you'll never die. <laughs> the health benefit is you'll never die. Even if you're killed, you will come back. Don't worry. When that'll be, I don't know. Anyway, there's my stats for you. How many hours do you think the DLC will be? So the thing with hours is it depends on the individual player, right? How much the player wants to explore, as well as uh, how much the player dies. Right? Tougher than Melania? I would wager there will be at least one boss tougher than Melania. And honestly, if there's not, I think they would be heavily disappointing. The reason I say that is because From Software's expansions, every single expansion they've put out, have offered tough optional bosses that were not in the base game otherwise. So if they don't do that same thing for this, then I think that would be pretty disappointing for not only myself, but a lot of people that play these games for the challenge. The whole reason I got into From Software's Souls Likes is because I wanted to challenge myself as a player. And granted, I fell in love with them, and I started paying attention to the story more and as, you know, as time went on, but at the end of the day, the main lure for me to play these games is indeed the masochism involved. So if the expansion comes out and they don't offer a boss tougher than Melania, I think many people, including myself, will be disappointed. Hey, Miss Bradica. What up, Bents? Is Melania easier to be defeated with a quick weapon? I have always found Melania easier when I use heavy weapons that can stagger her. Hey, Bartek, they were 21 months of membership, dude. Says, love you all. Much love, buddy. Thank you for continuing the membership. Welcome back. <laughs> Triple laser golems. Yeah, maybe we'll finally get our laser golem boss fight. There you go. Though I will say that would be kind of lame. <laughs> Please don't give me a laser golem boss fight. If it's not in the base game, don't put it in the expansion. I want a very tough original fight. Much like Melania, but its own unique thing. Alright, is this guy chasing me? He is. What should I get for my double scythe build? Uh, make sure you have frost on one of them and then amplify bleed on the other. And that's pretty much all you need. Spinning weapon could be good as well. Spinning weapon is always nice to have on a scythe. Spinning weapon can apply your effect really quickly.
All right. Lance AX, get your ass down here. Come here. Ow. Owie. Owie. Yo, this weapon is cool, dude. Ouch. Oh, come on, dude. Let me at him. Lead for me. There you are. Oof. I can't believe I'm not dead. I can't believe I didn't die. Lance Axe, you need to uh, relax a little bit there, friend. I'm not gonna lie, my dodge timing was so awful this fight. My god. I wish Lance AX's glaive was better, by the way. That incantation is so goddamn cool, but the damage it puts out for the FP cost is not so goddamn cool. I'll be honest. Sounds good, Emmer. Thanks for being here. I've actually never hopped down these before. I didn't realize that shortcut was there. Today I learned. Alright, there's a very specific thing over here that I gotta grab. There's a mimic over here, guys. Something a lot of people don't realize in this game. And it, someone, someone asked yesterday, tell me something about Elden Ring that I do not know. A lot of people already do know this, but they don't correlate the idea. Everything that drops a larval tier in this game is a mimic. If you pay attention, you'll see that they often start out as one thing, and when you kill them, they transform into another. This base idea is mimicry. This guy is cosplaying as a noble. He is not a noble. He is a mimic. I'll show you. See? Something a lot of people do not correlate to the mimics in this game because people that think people think that mimics can only exist as chests and that is simply not true mimics can mimic almost anything they want to that is literally in their name the entire point is they are a mimic right so these guys that drop larval tears are indeed mimics Always remember that. Just because it's not in the form of a chest doesn't mean it's not a mimic. Where's Lance AX located? Right here. In Altus Plateau. What you want to do is just follow this road after crossing this span right here at that way gate. And follow the road south. And then go around the slope here. Yeah, a lot of the mimics are showing up as those big, like, gray or silver balls. Yep. There's also a mimic in Liurnia that looks like a lobster, and after you kill the lobster, it becomes a grafted scion. True story. Uh, everyone knows of the mimic in uh, Limgrave that looks like a noble as well, but then becomes a rune bear. Yep. We're going to go up there because I don't remember what's actually up there. The rune bear scared the hell out of me that first time. It scared the shit out of me too, man. You're not alone. Ah, uh, yes. The classic defensive trebuchet. What up, hell chief? Hope you're dong great too, man. <laughs> Hope you're dong great too. Gale's an amazing fight. I agree.
Lightning Slash. So that's where you get Lightning Slash this whole time, huh? Hey, bud. Hope you don't mind a little bit of death. Hey, John. Happy Sunday to you, too. Trebuchet is loading up. Looks like he can't hit me from here, though. Yeah, happy St. Patty's Day. What up, Segaroth? In your opinion, what is the hardest boss in any From Software game? I would say Melania, yeah. But also, there's a lot of bosses in Armored Core games that are severely under underappreciated for difficulty as well, especially if you set the game to hard mode. A lot of the earlier Armored Core games had, like, regular missions that you could then put on hard mode after you uh, beat it for the first time. At least I think that's how it worked. Either way, they had a hard difficulty on a lot of missions. And a lot of the bosses on those missions, like other armored cores and shit, were very strong. Very hard to kill. Like White Glint and Armored Core 4 answer on hard mode? Holy shit, man. Holy shit. I'm a jig on hard mode? Oh my god, dude. Kind of insane. What up, Carter? Tell me what happened with Weeping Peninsula. What do you mean? What do you mean, why? I'm not sure what you mean by what happened to Weeping Peninsula. Who was the hardest boss in Armored Core 6? Um, probably pre-nerf Baltius. <laughs> I think that boss alone gate kept a lot of people from advancing in that game until it got nerfed. Missile Man goes nuts, dude. Don't mess with that guy. But also, Ibis. Ibis is kind of nuts. And then, uh... When, if you get the ending where you fight air or ire at the end of the game, it's also insane. That fight is so incredibly fast-paced, and if you do not move the right way, you're going to get absolutely screwed. Unless you happen to be able to land some really good shots with some heavy cannon stuff to uh, stagger her consistently, and then, you know, jump in, land some big melee damage or something. That fight went so hard, man. Uh, we got that dungeon down there already. Uh, let me think, let me think. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna grab all the stuff in this little valley. As if a trebuchet could target an individual so precisely. Yeah, that's why I said, ah, yes, the classic defensive trebuchet. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. If you're facing, like, a horde of enemies, and they're just all, like, out there, then sure, you can just launch it out there randomly, and you're gonna hit targets, right? Sure, you're gonna hit targets. But, you know. Catapults uh, usually do a little bit better than just random damage. A little bit more precise. It's still lobbing heavy objects, just a little bit more accurate. How do exactly did I put Frost and Bleed on my size? You can do it via Ashes of War that allow for it, or by getting the associated wet blade. Like for bleed and poison, for example, you need the black wet blade. For frostbite, you need the glintstone wet blade. And what happened in that place is that land only for prisoners, Weaving Peninsula. Uh, Weaving Peninsula is... Um, 
as far as I know, like Castle Morn, it's not like it has like jail cells on the back side, but I think it's just like a, a coastal fortress. I'm not sure of any specific lore down there otherwise. Isn't there something over at these ruins too? Yes, there is. Ah, the icon shield. I have seen some people using the icon shield recently. Does that do anything special? Maybe I should get out of this area because I know those guys are still chasing me. Maybe not. Divine Scene acts in and of itself as a sacred invocation, gradually restoring the carrier's hit points. So it does do something. Interesting. Very interesting. That's actually an item that I didn't know existed until a couple weeks ago. What up, Barge? All right. I got a lot of things chasing me, but I need to pull up the map. Please stop chasing me so I can... Thank you. Okay. I need to go over here. Sacks with do talisman that does 2 HP per second? Yeah, so it ends up like 5 or 6 per second, right? I will say, like, that's a cool idea, but I wouldn't really like to crutch on that. I feel like those could be wasted slots. The only time I would ever put that shield on my back is if I just had so much, like, extra weight. To where it would just be purely beneficial, because nothing else would be taking up that weight in general by itself, you know? Thanks, Majin Kai. I have not entered the capital yet. I've still got things I want to take care of out here. Yo, Ether, thanks for joining us. The murder being one down this way. I can see it there. Three ads so far. Keep in mind that I do not play ads manually. That is not on my ends. And then the other one is, like, over here-ish. So, like, when you say, I've seen this many ads, like, yeah, I, I'm not saying you are saying this, but it seems like you're trying to, like, accuse me of doing it manually. But that is not the case. I just want that to be very clear. I'm not saying you are. Again, I'm just saying that... When people do say, oh man, I've seen ads, it's not me playing them. I have no control over that. I already have it set to the lowest possible number as possible. I have it set to the setting that is the lowest amount played, but they still play them randomly. That is not me. Unfortunately, there is no option to make it zero. Otherwise, I would set it to that. Are you accusing us of accusing you of something diabolical? Generally, Black Crystal, yes, because they have the environment to practice more. Doesn't mean there aren't good players in both of those sports from warmer climates, though. There certainly are. Bum, bum, bum. Dude, you sound nice. What mic do you use? Exclamation mark, mic. Not gay, just saying. Fellas, is it gay to enjoy someone's voice? Are you accusing me of accusing you? Give me the magics. I love how when you destroy the chair, the guy is still sitting. Can I do something here? 
Yeah, sit on daddy's lap. Okay, that doesn't really work so well. Hold on. Mmm. Hey, good to hear it, Tovins. There you go. I am I am a cushion. I am cushion. <laughs> Alright, that doesn't work either. Okay. No fun to be had here. No fun. Alright, I think I've gotten pretty much everything down here that I feel is worth getting. Uh, what can we do next? Not all that. We did all that down there. We already did this dungeon down here. Let me go here. I don't know if I've killed these bosses up here yet. Let me just check it out. What did I miss in the 30 minutes I missed was watching your Ascended mod run. I have just been killing bosses and grabbing items. But also, yes, exclamation mark microphone, or exclamation mark mic, rather, M-I-C, will show you uh, what microphone I use. I should have already bought the torch from you. I did. Is it not nighttime? Dude, go away. What are you doing? Okay, he's not leaving because the bell bearing hunter here is already dead. Okay, we're good. Uh, let's go do. Yeah, I'm gonna go this way. Alright, I'm gonna go this way. We're gonna go to the uh, hero's grave down here. What's up, Ritter? Hey guys, do me a big favor. If you haven't already left a like on the video, make sure you do. I am uh, trying to up the activity on my channel. I need your guys' assistance to make this work. So in a moment, after I get over here, I'm going to show you something that is very important to me. I'm going to show you something. I've already killed these golems. That's good. I have been over here. I think I killed DTS already too, didn't I? I know I did because I have Capital Rampart. What up, Bren? Let me just get over to this next area first before I look away. How to summon bell-bearing hunters? Go to a known location for them. Wait at a nearby site of grace. Make it nightfall. If the uh, merchant is still there, just talk to him really quickly and then go back and sit at the site of grace again. And as long as it's still night, it will appear because the merchant will have left. Love how he ran up and then roared at the back of my head. Is this mushroom men? Hey, Joe. All right. Now, uh, so I've been working on my channel in a big way. I've been moving things around, changing some things up. I am going to show you the homepage of my channel because I know a lot of people have not yet seen it. So right here, this is this is my channel. When you go to youtube.com forward slash the Josh feed, even without the featured on there, if you just go to this, it'll bring up my homepage. This is my channel here on YouTube, okay? You can see here that it, whenever I'm live, it'll show that I am live right there. If I'm not live... If you are not a subscriber, it will show you a video. If you are a subscriber, then it will not show you anything there. At the top, it shows you all of my latest videos. Like these two videos I've put out in the last two days. I put this one out 11 days ago. And it has been a long time since I uploaded since these three videos. Like any individual video on my channel. Last time I did was four months ago. And that was one of my first Deathless runs on Elden Ring, right? But it shows you all of my most recent videos here. And then it has a play all option, which brings up a special playlist where it'll just show all of my videos. But that's not the important thing here. That's not the important thing. What is important is I have separate 
playlist here for all of the content that I've ever put on my channel. All of it. I have them individualized, separated by year. So all of last year's live streams and videos all appear under 2023 series. These are all of my playlists that I put out of every single game that I played, both on live stream and videos for the year 2023. Okay? Literally all of it. There is so much content in just that year alone. And I have it separated this way so that way you can always just look at it. You can either click on, you know, where it says 2023 series to get all of this. You can scroll over to see more or click view all, which brings up that window again, right? And you also have, you know, 2022, which again, like God of War, The Last of Us, Resident Evil 8, Village and the expansion, Scorn, some more grounded stuff. My first Elden Ring playthrough right there. You know, Dead Space 2008, Strangers of Paradise, Horizon Forbidden West, all of these games that I played in the year of 2022, all of them. Look at all this. Look at all this content. And then for the year 2021 as well, this is all some real old content. This is before I started live streaming on the regular on YouTube. And then all of my really old stuff from the year 2018 all the way through 2020. This is when I was taking highlights from my Twitch channel and uploading them specifically. Oh, look, there's me. There's me. There I am. My ugly mug. All of that stuff exists on my homepage and it's more accessible so you guys can find it. So with that said, after stream tonight and in the coming days, you guys should go here and take a look at some of the stuff. You might find something that you've never seen before that you might enjoy on my channel. All right. I just wanted to show you guys that. I just wanted to show you that. I think it's pretty cool. Where am I going? Need to go this way. When I ask a question and expect a short, honest answer, um, I'm not going to lie to you. Do you expect that people just lie to you on the regular? Because I'll be honest, man. I'll be honest. See, I'm, see how I said I'm being honest? I'm not going to mince words. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to make shit up and tell you what you want to hear. I am a very blunt, honest person. <laughs> I would say it's one of my best and worst qualities simultaneously. Content sparing gaming partner, good or bad? I don't know what you mean by content sparing. I need you to elaborate on that. Yo, Majin Kai, thanks for becoming a member of the channel once again, dude. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Very nice of you. Ooh, I've not been down here in a long-ass time. A very long time. All right. Get me out of there. Oh, that guy's actually poisoned. I didn't realize. Yo, Bren, thanks for get five gifted memberships to the channel, man. I really appreciate it, dude. Very nice of you, dude. Thank you. I appreciate it loads. Thanks for doing it. Thanks for doing it, man. As in fights race to the top of W Mountain, if you will. Do you mean like sparring? 
I'm sorry, Carter. I'm just not really, um, I'm not able to understand what you're trying to ask here. Hey, this isn't me. Like, I'm not, I'm not like being a jerk. I'm just not really understanding. I'm sorry. I'm just having a dumb moment, I think. Yo, Majin Kai, $2 super chat. Thank you. This is good to be green again. Hell yeah. Thanks for being green, my dude. What up, Roku? Yeah, YouTube does not send out a whole lot of notif notifications. Again, we have to fight against this. We have to fight against this. It's an uphill battle the entire way. I think this is the only... Like, that, the weapon that that guy is wielding right there, that is a Grossmesser. That is a... It's a special curved sword. This is the only skeleton I know of in the whole game that wields it. I'm sure there's more. They're just, like, a, a common enemy in the game. But this is the only one I know for sure that has it. And on top of that, it's a rare drop. I would like to get it. But farming that guy would be so tedious. Alright, this leads back up here. We've already killed the chariots. Do you have a gross messer as well? Oh, this guy hit. No, I think that's a regular scimitar. Yeah, that's just a regular scimitar. Never mind. Ah, yes. The fire and the flames. Gross monster skeletons in the catacombs and weaving peninsula behind the fog wall. In the catacombs and weaving peninsula. Okay, so weaving peninsula. Catacombs. I know of this one. I know of this one. I think this one over here has imps, so you must mean this one. This one. Tombs word catacombs. Yeah, there's no other catacombs down here. Maybe I'll check that out. Tomb's word. Wanna, what do you want us to do about the YouTube notification system? Uh, I would say the only thing you really can do about it is just pay attention to my channel. If you want to see my content, go to my channel on the regular. I do stream most days of the week, you know? And then I uh, also am going to be uploading as often as I can. So I would say just keep an eye out. I do put live stream notifications in my Discord as well, so that's a thing. If you want to join the Discord, you can use the notification ping there. Oh, not the death blight! Oh, I barely escaped. Crucible something talisman. Ah, feather. Uh, Carter, I'm looking for a follow- Oh, there it is. Boxers often have sparring partners. They're in the ring fighting and training. Isn't someone to banter and compete with a good content idea? It can be, yes. It absolutely can be. It just depends on the type of content that you make. Like, for me, the large majority of my content is, like, single-player stuff. So the only way that that would really work is if we came up with our own competitions of some sort. Like, if I were a speedrunner, for example, then we would have head-to-head -head speed runs of some sort. A good example of this is there's a group of streamers that do play Souls Likes, a lot of Elden Ring, for example, where they do compete against each other in things like, uh, you know, like bingo, and they also have like a zero hit league, stuff like that. That is an, a good example of that premise. For me specifically, I am not so interested in that, as I like to... Just kind of do things my own way. I don't, I don't, I don't like to tie my content to anyone else, because I just want my content to be about the adventures that I go on. Now that's not to say that I haven't streamed other people in the past, because I have. I used to play a lot of uh, FPS games with Daz and Fire, 
like Battlefield, Call of Duty, Apex Legends, PUBG, stuff like that. Um, I have also played some beat-em-up stuff with, say, Daz as well, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We played that together, just co opted and bantered about. But ultimately, it just depends on the type of content that the individuals like to make, and they just kind of go from there. Oh, God. Where is my... Where's me buckler? Sir, where's me buckler? Oh, you know what, dude? I have parry on my sword. What am I talking about? I don't need me buckler. I don't need me buckler. I forgot I have parry on my sword. That's right. So, yes, Carter, that is a, a good idea, but it depends on the individuals. And also, the, like, the individuals need to come up with their own open agreement as to what is allowed. Because, the, you know, everyone has their own standards, right? And I have seen this so many times as well, where people will stream together one day and then be the worst of enemies the next because someone oversteps someone else's boundaries. So it's just something that, as content creators, people just need to kind of come to a, a very open and honest agreement as to how they want things to run. And if something happens that they don't like or do like, they need to voice their, their thoughts and they need to be level-headed about it. And the thing is about the internet is you can't expect people to always be open-minded about this stuff, unfortunately. It's just the nature of it all. Do, 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 do. There's the poison. That's what I wanted. Oh, rolled early. Hey, Sven. Is the tomb word catacombs behind the fog wall right near the grace? All right, Illuminate. Thanks for letting me know. I had no idea there were gross messers down there. I guess if that's where, if, if I'm gonna farm it, that's where I'll go. Good call, thank you. I cannot believe I did not eat that sword. Nice parry, idiot. <laughs> Enjoy your time, Aiden. I'm doing all right, Matthew. How are you, man? Why did that not parry? That seemed like it was pretty spot on to me. Oh well, what can you do? With this uh, curved sword parry... Oh, I just whistled there. With this curved sword parry, you really have to do it last second. This guy's still not poisoned. There it is.
Neat. I love that fight, dude. That fight is so fun. It's so fun. Uh, let me go here. But the, um, yeah, the curved sword parry, you really have to do it last second. Which makes sense because the animation does happen very quickly. I guess I'm just used to, like, the parry where it takes a second to wind up. Or, like, even the regular shield where it takes a second to wind up. This one seems rather instantaneous. It's It just feels faster. There is less frames overall. But it looks like if you don't hit it in the first half of the animation, you're not going to get it at all. The latter half is just, like, for show. There's no actual parry frames there. Or at least that's how it seems. I just restarted the game, and boy, forgot how hard it is. I have found newfound appreciation for your Deathless run now. Nice. Let's go, dude. Hope you're enjoying your time. Punishment so brutal if you miss parries? Yeah, rightfully so. I think if you miss, it should be punished. It's a high risk, high reward system, right? Hey, menacing. Introverted dream, hello. Hey, Aaron. You tend to avoid Ordovus' Ash of War. It's so easy for me to parry it. I don't know why. I just... For that one, the risk is a lot higher. If you do miss that, then obviously it's a devastating amount of damage. And I would rather play it on the safer side and just parry the things that I know for sure I can parry. With, uh... You know... You end up with the same amount of damage at the end of the day. So that one is just better to avoid and then run back in and get like a quick running L1 attack in. Especially when it comes from the perspective of trying to build up poison with this build, for example. But yeah, you're right. It is, it is a very parryable attack and I have parried it before. I just don't find that attack specifically worth parrying. First sword parry, seven frames, parry daggers, nine, medium and small shield is nine, tops parry is nine frames, retaliation, nine frames, golden parry, 11, parry buckler, 11. I thought golden parry was going to be more than 11. I thought that was the entire purpose. That's why it takes FP to use. That should be more than 11 frames. I thought it was like 13 or something. Golden parry allows range parry, so 11 frames. And why would you ever bother using it? Like, what what is range that is worth parrying? Uh, I guess for magic, but then at that point, just use Karian Retaliation. Because then it doesn't use magic, or I'm sorry, it doesn't use mana unless it's parrying magic itself. <laughs> For me, all you revealed is the utter uselessness in Golden Parry. If that's if that's the way it really is, then that is just utterly useless. Why would you ever use that? Regarding your past content, if you run a playlist and only mute the tab, it helps very much. True or false? True. Watch time is king. If you have my playlist running, it directly benefits me and helps my channel get recommended to more people. going the wrong way.
ranges and you can stand further away oh yes okay so it allows you to stand further away i guess if you're like if you're not great at positioning better then sure but my issue with parrying things further away is then the player then has to get used to the idea of running that gap to try to get the critical counter I think, like, personally, I think you would be better off learning how to parry with a buckler because that allows you to be closer and already in position to land the critical hit after a successful parry. So I would think... Okay, so here's the thing. This, this might be a hot take. I don't know. But I think if you're going to parry and you're going to try to learn how to parry, never use golden parry. It creates a very bad habit. Not only does it use your mana, which could be used effectively towards other things like landing damage or buffing yourself, it, it creates a bad habit of positioning poorly for the counterattack, which means that you're going to be panicking. Against, say, say that you're trying to learn to parry against Melania, right? Which, fine, that is a legitimate thing. You, you want to learn how to parry one of the toughest bosses in the game, you can very much so do that. Why crutch on golden parry when you can learn more from using the buckler and be already in position? You get the same amount of frames, but you also don't get the crutch of poor positioning. Yeah. Where do you find past threads? Do you remember? If you do Millicent's quest, you can eventually go to Gowry and purchase it from him. I appreciate that a lot, Majin Kai. That means a lot, dude. All right, I want to parry this guy too. Come here. Come get the parry, baby. Yeah, this parry is very last seconds. I kind of like it. I like the idea because it's more instantaneous. This could be good for me. Alright, that was a little bit too last second. Oh, yeah. I kind of like this, actually. No grabbing. Oh, yeah. You see, now that I'm learning more of it, I'm getting a lot more consistent with it. This could be good. What up, Benino? Good to see you again, too. Hey, Clyde. What's a good weapon that does lots of poise damage, but is decently fast? So here's the thing. Generally speaking, the heavier the weapon, the more poise damage it does. I'm sure there's a little bit of discrepancy here and there where that's not 100% true, but generally that's the rule. The rule. Which also means that generally, the heavier a weapon is, the slower it swings. Again, I'm sure there's discrepancies to this. It's not completely true, but for the most part, that's true. So if you want to make a balance of this, you have to figure out the sweet spot for yourself. But also, I do believe strike weaponry, by default, does do a little bit more poise damage too. I think. So 
So if you really want to make the most of this, perhaps consider using something that does strike damage. All right, for this one, we got to change stuff up ever so slightly. Oh, I don't have 12 strength to wield this. It's okay. I can just put two hands on it. It'll work. <laughs> That's what she said. You damn snails, come here. All right. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to embarrass that guy. Now, where's my weapon at? Where's me other weapon at? Where's me sword? Snails were the real boss? Yeah, the snails are tougher in that fight for sure. But again, like, I only I only make the uh, the death birds and death right birds look easier now because I just understand what they're truly weak to. If you use holy, specifically something that says that it's against um, those who walk in death, then it just does a shitload of damage. If something is truly holy and is anti-death, not just faith, but it needs to be anti-death faith. And it just does a ton of damage to him. Have a new job tomorrow's my first day. Encourage me or something? I mean, listen, man. I don't think you need encouragement. You had the balls to go out there and get a job yourself. You already, you're already done like 80% of the work. The rest of it is just showing up and getting paid. Just do the work that you signed up to do. And you'll be good, man. Holy falls off at the end quickly, though. That is actually pretty... I don't want to say completely untrue, but it, it does have, again, discrepancies. And the reason why I know this is because I have messed around with it rather extensively. When you use the right things and the right builds, faiths and holy damage can still do a shitload. You can take one look at my Crucible Knight build to see that. Granted that the Crucible Knight faith stuff works a little bit differently because it is split damage but it somehow is not considered so much split damage it can still do really well there are faith based things that still do great or i should say holy holy based things that are still great all right let me go down here Hey, Robin. Hey, Andre. My suggestion overall, though, is if you're afraid to use it because you think it falls off, I would say try it out anyway. You might be pleasantly surprised as to what you're capable of pulling off with that damage. But also, if you're afraid of building around it, take a look at my stats. Take a look at my stats here. I have 16 faith. But I'm still capable of using things that have a shitload of holy damage, like I just did. Like Last Rites on the Golden Epitaph, Golden Vow. Right? These still give me that big damage 
burst, not only a, like just raw damage, you know, buff from Golden Vow, but Last Rite specifically gives you a shitload of damage bonus against those who walk in death, even with these stats. So I would say it is worth using on the side to get rid of things like Death Birds and Death Rite Birds very quickly. You don't need to build around it to make it effective. My build has nothing to do with faith overall outside of a few incantations like Flame Grant Me Strength, Flame Cleanse Me, Poison Mist, and Flame Sling. I can't even use my rotten stuff right now. And yet I still did a shitload of holy damage. So again, it's still possible for you to do without building around it, and it's definitely a good side bit to have against these specific fights. I think I'm done with Altus Plateau. I guess we can go to Mount Gelmir. I know I did a lot of the stuff in Mount Gelmir already. I think I grabbed everything that needs to be grabbed, but I'm going to go down this way as I've not been down this path in a long time. So let's do that. Hey, Dionysus. Any thoughts about Dark Souls Arch Thrones? I played for like six hours of it last night. I'm going to be putting a video out on it sometime in the next few days, I think. E-Girl Feet is in the chat. Hello there. Hero's Grave. Hero's Grave is already done. There is no other Hero's Grave in this area. It's just that one. It's already done. As a samurai, I'm level 40 and haven't built strength. Do I need to start focusing on it too? It just depends on what you're wielding. If you're still using katanas, they scale mostly on dexterity. So I would say still focus on dexterity. But also make sure you're building up health too. A lot of people take recommendations for like the specific damage stats that they're using, but then they just kind of ignore building up their health pool. Make sure you're building up your health too. When you're considering your next few levels... Think of it like this. With your next few levels, if you build up health, you'll, you'll have that much more possibility of surviving an extra hit against most enemies in the game. But if you take, say, two or three dexterity or two or three strength instead, then it's not going... Like, that little bit of damage is very highly likely not going to allow you to kill any one enemy with that one extra hit. It's just not enough on the damage stat. If you have trouble surviving, specifically, build your health. It is the most effective attribute in the entire game. Never forget that. Yo, Dom, thank you for 14 months of membership, man. Welcome back. I appreciate it loads, buddy. Thank you. Your voice sounds like it's back to normal. Yeah, thank you, man. It is. I guess I just never really realized, like, how sick I was. Even, like, when I go back and watch my past streams of the past couple of months, you could definitely hear a little bit of difference in my voice. It's definitely back to normal now, and I'm very happy about that. It doesn't feel weird to talk anymore, either. Like, I don't run out of breath <laughs> when talking, which is great. Big enjoyer of that. Leaf. There's so many of these damn, damn things out here. Are these items any good? Are they worth it? They are not worth it. Can confirm they are not worth it. Let me, um, unpin that message. There we go. I forgot about that. Hello, Anastasia.
Not what I wanted to do. Oh, okay. Cool. Thanks for the knife. Ow. 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 Stop it. I believe this item is a stone sword key. It is. My god, I remembered. I've not been over here in ages. But I don't think there's anything else of any value out here. Just a broken ass bridge. Hey, did you guys know? This, this might come as a surprise, but did you guys know that fire burns? True story. You don't believe me? Watch this. See? I told you. I told you. Yep, there's nothing else down here. That's it. Okay, so I think the next thing to do is just go to Volcano Manor and start doing the invasions from Bernal. We're going to work on Bernal's quest, Patch's quest, and Raya's quest. Which, I'll be honest, I don't really remember a whole lot of Raya's quest. Oh boy. Someone please kill him. Someone please kill him. What up, Sean? Hope you're well too, dude. Windmill Village done? Yes. What's your favorite quest? I don't really know. It is the Brian. Hey, what up, Clyde? Comp is crashing. <laughs> Sorry about that, dude. You. What in heaven's a volcano? I hope you want Anything to craft to boost magic damage like exalted flesh? I'm sure there's something. But I don't really know off the top of my head, to be honest. Hello, snake girl. Under lady. I did kill the pizza cutter guy, right? I'm pretty sure I did. Do I have his weapon? I do. I did indeed kill him. Did you read the letter? That is the task. You will be calm if you are alone, but you must leave. This is a we have no place. Alright, let me speak to Patches once more, and then we'll be on our way. I'm about to take on Rikard? I will be today, but I've got some other business to take care of first. I'm gonna buy these. They're pretty cheap. Cheers for that. Cheers for that. All right, first invasion is down in Limgrave. I was today years old when I found out Josh streamed Sunday. I don't have like a set schedule for like days of the week. I just stream most days. I'm like four or five days on and then two or three days off. That's pretty much my schedule. I kind of like it like that. I've been thinking so hard about uh, like having a solid schedule, but I think having it more free flowing just fits my lifestyle more. Just allows me to be more free flowing and happier. I think the idea of creating obligations for myself just kind of turns it into something. I don't want to say tedious, but has that similar idea to it, I guess, for lack of a better way to say it. I keep pressing L2. Come and get it, buddy. Come here. Step into my sneeze. Buddy. Buddy.
Oh my god, what, what is my character doing? What did I just do? I like walked up to him and then turned around. What the hell? You know what, dude? You know what, man? Come here. Come here. Have this one, idiot. Have this one, stupid. Yeah, have a fireball. Stupid. My fireball does shit damage. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's actually hilarious, dude. Hey, Claire. What up, Dark Souls Mushroom? You look like me in my mushroom youth. Nice. I aspire to be you, Dad. You I am. This is Magma Shot. This is Hear that? I am pleased. She is pleased to have me on her side. Have you any strength? Something awful. It just isn't. So like. More. So like. More. Ah, well. So you've been. I forgot Dialos is over here. Uh, well, you see, after much revenge is according to life, I've got the sun champion. It hit me like at my fall. Of course, but in four, it's a coming time. And you know that such is. I the pale, could that won't be there. They'll be dark. The tale of. I the pale, could that won't be there. They'll be dark. The tale of. Okay. Now, we have the next invasion. The invasion is going to be up there. But first, I want to go to Jarberg. Diallo should be over here now, I think. Yeah, the scale armor set's pretty nice, pretty good to have. But I will say, the main reason I'm doing this quest is the Raging Wolf armor set. I love the way that armor set looks. I would say it's like top five for me. Dialos is not here yet. Why? Why? Maybe if I speak with uh, Cuz up here? Nope, let me sit at the site of Grace and reset. Isn't it after you kill Rygard? I have no idea. To be honest, it's been so long since I've done this quest, I don't remember. Yeah, Jar Baron, but not Dialos. Is Dialos still up here? Yes, Knight Dialos is still up there. Let me go over here to visually confirm, and then we'll go back up there and speak to him again, just to see... Yeah, he's not there. It's been so long since I've done this quest, I don't exactly recall the order of operations. He's sleeping now. So maybe now? Things will change? What a nice fungus. Hey, thanks for noticing, Red Yaga. What do you even get from this quest? I assume it's only the pot talisman. I think that's that's it, yeah. What up, Jay Godwin? Hey, Hebel Bebel. Overall, what you get out of it isn't like a big deal, but yeah. Hey, Whitney. Hey, Kevin. Yes, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. The order of operations. Love my outfit. Thank you. What do you got on those swords? I've got poison. I've got two for poison, two for bleed. Poison Moth Flights, and I've got, like, Blood Blade and, uh, what is it, Bloody Slash on the other? Yeah. Poison Moth Flight, Parry, Blood Blade, P Bloody Slash. Those are my Ashes of War. I will say that I don't really so use so much the Blood Ones, reasons. though. Though I probably will against tougher enemies, just to build up bleed faster. Dialos wasn't there, was he? I did not see Dialos in that room. Ah, Dialos has left. 
Maybe he's back at the round table hold. Dialos is not at the round table hold. Maybe he's back in Jarberg. Playing Rise of Ronin or Dragon's Dogma 2? Definitely Dragon's Dogma 2, and I'm debating Rise of Ronin in some videos. Hold on. Are you awake again? You are. Let's speak with you first. Those awful poachers. Those awful poachers. Oh, Diawos. Okay, Diawos is not here. So again, I'm assuming that he'll show up a little bit later. Also, isn't... uh. Alexander is supposed to show up over here at some point, but I, I'm probably beyond that because he was already in Volcano Manor. I expect next I'll see him is in the mountaintops as a summon against the fire giants, but I will not summon him there. That is a part of the quest you can skip without penalty, and then he'll appear in Farm Azula for the end. But I'm going to see if he's over here anyway. You guys want to hear something weird? So at the beginning of the game, when you first meet Alexander, he wants you to smack his ass really hard so that way you can knock him out of the hole. But then, he comes over here and gets stuck again at some point in this hole right here. I'm already beyond that part as, you know, as you can see, he's not here. But in this one, he's, he wants you to oil him up first. Isn't that something? First, he's like, hey, smack my ass. And then he's like, and then he's next, like, hey, oil me up and then smack my ass. Alexander's one kinky man. Don't underestimate him. What up, Mystique? Did I meet Alexander at the Magma Worm? I did. Yes. Okay, so let's go do this invasion right here, then. Yeah, and then he's all like, Help me, Step Tarnished! I'm stuck! You see, what, you see what I'm saying here? You see what I'm saying? He says, help me step tarnished, I'm stuck, and then say, hey, smack my ass to help me out. Then the next time, he's like, yo, oil me up first. Step tarnished. He's a kinky man. He changed a lot post-Radon. <laughs> Alexander is indeed sus, dude. Don't kick shame him. Kink shaming is my kink. <laughs> what up, Mark? Sus more like sub. <laughs> True. Oh, wrong one. Eat fireball, idiot. Messed up, Riley. Never allow me to parry. Okay. Oh, now Dialos is back here again. First he wasn't there, now he is there. What the? I see here is your usual. Serpent the Bone Blade. Bird, it was One of the more fun katanas in the game. Our Lord, if the earth, we are with, we the, if you follow the Lords, it cannot. 
if you cannot. I do believe now we can grab Patch's quest. Ah, this. Yep. If you really Go on. <laughs> this will allow for an invasion in Magma Worm Makar's arena, and when you complete it, you get the Magma Whip. Yo, Commander Zymus, thank you for the Twitch Prime, dude. I appreciate it loads. Thank you so much. Ah, uh, I'm terribly sorry. I haven't achieved even though I'm just still yet to. Perhaps I am a no. Ah, he had more dialogue, but he had to leave first. No. What an easy one. Perhaps no. What an easy one. Look at you. I knew you'd take this. All right, so now we have three special invasions. Patches, Bernal, and, uh... The one for Juno Hoslo. Well. well. Thou art of passing skill. And there's Snake Girl. Yay! Snake Girl! Everyone wave hello to Snake Girl. Brave tarnished. What is your business here? I'm afraid this is not a the Bruno R from YouTube. Hey, thank you for the Twitch Prime, Bruno. Upon your face. Goodness. Am I still a serpent? Oh, Don't need to do second one as well. Yeah, I'm just grabbing all the items that I can. Oh, what up, Night City? I waved on this. Please forgive. Do you understand, Lady? Lady, I am told that my mother. I am a people, and but you are not. My a secret now. I said, please keep them. My a secret now. I said, please keep them. All right, now we can speak with Tanith, and she will give us the forgetfulness potion. If you forget, cannot. Did you see the girl? Mm. Well, then perhaps not. Please, her true vi honestly. Please, her true vi Okay, maybe she gives it to us after I sit. If you hit cannot. Okay, maybe not yet. Maybe I speak to her again. Uh, forgive me. Mm. I know I, I saw some. It entered if. I took the first of all, hey, lady. I realize if you disc I love that she kind of gives you hints, and this is something that I feel is underappreciated about from software games. A lot of people struggle with them as far as getting like direction and where to go next. But if you actually pay attention to the things she's saying, she says she's hearing things slithering in the walls. You also get this drawing room key that opens most doors here. And so if you take that hint, she said, she, you, I hear something slithering in the walls. I don't know what it is, but I hear it. But then you go around and smack the walls. It actually leads you to where you're supposed to go next. And there's the slithering she hears in the wall right there. It literally, as soon as you walk in, it slithers. Or hisses. But it makes that noise. And of course, you can hear like the slithering of it moving on the floor and stuff. You know what I mean? I really enjoy that. I love that it just kind of gives you hints via the dialogue. And all the while, she has like a special side quest for you to keep talking to her, you know? This is entered the perhaps, and if you just This is you entered the door of the next room, and then boom, there you are. There's where you're supposed to go next. I love that. I think that's so cool. If you fall it cannot Oh. If you hit cannot she said I should have known. Well, there we go, so now we get the potion. What matter? Okay, I lied. If you hit cannot, lady, would you give me the potion? The sir, it entered the haps. If you discover, okay, so I think maybe I'll be able to get the potion from her after Raya leaves. She'll go out, out into the uh, volcano area. But for now, let's go right here. Get the potion after you kill Rykard and she leaves the manor? All right. This is where you get, I want to say this is the highest poise armor set in the game. I want to say. Trigeth's armor. The bull goats.
Oh my damages, sir. Oh. The swing on that's a little bit slow. Gotta remember that. Worth it. <laughs> God damn, brother. Bleed. Why won't you bleed? There it is. Bum, bum, bum. Did he give Zarias the Serpent's Amnium first? You get that from killing the Godskin Noble, right? So we'll go there and do that soon. But we got that done. I know Patch's Invasion is over here, which I think I need to do this before killing Rykard. It's not too hard to get there, though. And then this one... Uh, I don't know if I get a special reward for doing this and then going back to Bernal. Do you think we should try that? Don't kill Rykard yet. Go up there and then speak to Bernal afterward, after killing Juno Haslo. Maybe. I've never actually done it in that order before. I don't know if you get anything different out of it. Am I going to kill Radabeast this or next stream? Uh, Radagon and Elden Beast, I'm actually not going to kill right away on this playthrough. I'm going to kill Radagon and Elden Beast on this playthrough after the DLC comes out. I don't think there will be anything different, but I am highly curious and I want to see if anything is different. At the, you know, by doing it in that order. Again, I highly doubt it, but I still want to experiment. I think it's worth having a playthrough to experiment with things on. Because then I can do uh, the DLC with any other playthrough that I have, you know, with Ratabeast already dead. Again, I highly doubt anything will actually be different, but I think it's worth trying. Hey, Screamer. Hey, Dano. It's going well. How are you? Hey, Victoria. Welcome back to... There's not a whole lot of games that I'm very interested in, like all this like high level of secrecy in certain things, but I think with this game, it's worth investigating just because it's something that I, you know, I enjoy the secrets and stuff in this game, so it's just a big curiosity point for me. I'm even wondering if it would be worth stopping this playthrough before even burning the Erd Tree. Just for the sake of experimentation. Damn, these really put out some good damage already. Oh, we got Envoy's Longhorn first try. <laughs> Let's go. I don't have to farm that weapon now. Sick. We love getting those big rare drops right away. We love that. We love that so much, dude. <laughs> that is so good. Hell yeah, dude. That's bullshit. <laughs> it is. That is kind of bullshit. I know people have spent a lot of time farming that, and I just got it without even trying. I was like, you know what? Let me go kill this guy just on a whim. Just see if I do get it. It actually worked out. This is why I've been going around killing like every enemy, just because you never know what's going to drop. You never know, man.
Poison Moth Flight, guys, you know how much you know how much damage that just did? It only cost 7 FP. That's pretty damn good. I know it has a bit of a wind-up to it, but I do feel like this Ash of War is pretty underrated. Sounds good, Fox. Hey, Vasto. Am I going to kill Lady Tanith in a Crucible Knight? Yeah. You can do Poison Moth Flight while getting a Bleed proc while hitting with a Bleed Weapon. The damage is insane. That is, yeah, that is, <laughs> that is something. I believe you can put Poison Moth Flight and then actually make it so it's, you know, the weapon is otherwise Bleed. If you can actually build that up to really combo that, I'm sure that's a massive spike in damage. The Black Bow is over here, I believe. I'm just kidding. Wrong area. Oh, man, I just remembered how much of this area there actually is to explore. Holy shit. Yeah, the Black Bow is down lower in the city. What's up, Ziku? Oh, my God. Good Christ. Lady just gave me budding cave moss. Why do you have cave moss in your pocket? I know you're a perfumer and everything, but why are you carrying around moss? Is that not strange? Is that not a strange thing to do? Oh, I forgot there's actually two ways out here. I always... Yeah. <laughs> I very rarely go this way, so it's... Oh, God. I forgot. What is poison scale with again? It builds up faster with arcane. Stupid. The lane delving, I guess. Yeah, there's a lot of like little pathways throughout the entire area. What do you mean? Where do you keep your cave moss? Um, I generally leave it in the caves. Generally. Go on, do the thing. I know you're going to do it. Oh, you didn't do it. Holy shit. There it is. The Lord's Rune. Lots of lanes to travel. Call it Lanedell. Oh my god, dude. He's on to something here. My 
utmost thanks for bringing me to the base of the Erd Tree. You need the chat grant me strength incantation? True. I shall do farewell. I shall leave Torrin. <laughs> Centipede, welcome back, dude. Hardest boss in your opinion? I mean, I, I'm still pretty sure it's Melania. After all the practice I've had against Blackblade Kindreds, I actually am not so scared of them anymore. It has been a long time since I died against one. With all my deathless runs, I'm feeling a lot more confident against them than I used to be. There's actually, uh, I want to say that's a stone sword key on top of that, but we can't really get there until a little bit later. But I don't think there's anything else down here worth mentioning. I know there's a Crucible Knight back the other way, though, and I want to tackle that first. Been on sick leave for over a month, broke a bone in my wrist, but luckily can play Elden Ring on PS5. Ah, sorry you broke your wrist, man. If you don't mind me asking, what'd you do to break your wrist? Out of curiosity. You're doing the right thing, though. What a lot of people do is, like, when they, when they get, like, a serious injury, they'll still try to, like, work through it, which just causes long-term and possibly permanent damage and problems, so making sure that it's well rested and, you know, fixes itself properly is definitely the right thing to do. I am the Mushroom Man. Where does it take me again? I can't remember where this even goes. Ah, so that's how you complete that story. It's been so long since I've done this that I forgot that it even takes you here. See, this is why I'm enjoying this playthrough again, just kind of casually playing and rediscovering everything about this game. When you get into a certain mindset where you're just like, even when you're being focused and trying to take out all the bosses, there's still so much more to this game that you miss little side paths like this. It's crazy, dude. I think I remember where this one takes me as well. Should go down, right? Yep. I recall. Very good. Very good. Hey! Mm, gravel stone. Where are you guys even coming from? I was about to say, why does that mushroom, or why does that guy have a mushroom in his pocket? But then I remembered I'm wearing mushrooms on my body, so I have very room to speak on the, top, on the topic. These guys are probably wondering, like, why is he wearing mushrooms? Stone Sword Key. I forgot that was a Stone Sword Key. I don't remember the last time I was actually down this way. Alright, I remember there's a uh, tree spirit over there. Should be a soldier in here. Yep. Oh boy! 
We love lightning pots. Clarifying bolluses. I actually think it's really cool to see little drops like that, too. Clarifying bolluses. I want to say it's kind of a hint that there is more to this city than originally thought. Because obviously the three fingers is trapped way down below. The frenzied flame. Can you kill someone with a kick? Uh, it does do damage, right? So I believe so. This guy's praying to a tree spirit. Where are the three fingers? Huh? You heard what I said. They're down below. You just killed the guy in that window, dude. What the hell's wrong with you? Playing mouse and keyboard or gamepad, I'm using a controller, him. Souls likes, I play controller. Pretty much everything else, I use keyboard and mouse. Ever played Near Automata or Neo 2? I have played Near Automata in its entirety. Uh, Neo 2, I've only played a couple hours of. I uh, have this one. Or not. Have this one. Or not. Have this one. There we go. Finally got it, guys. Only took forever. Couple hours. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's a couple hours. Hold on. Let me pull up my Steam. Neo 2, Neo 2. Where's Neo 2? Where is it? Where'd I put it? There it is. Oh, I didn't mean to open it. No, not two games at once. Okay, 5.6 hours, okay? I played 5.6 hours of Neo 2. Okay. I use claw grip, yeah. What level am I? We are currently 103. The guilty hood. Hey, thanks, Joseph. Thanks, man. Do you have playlists of Near Automata or Neo 2? I do not, no. Nope. Uh, I played Near Automata on stream on Twitch years ago. But I never recorded it nor uploaded it to YouTube. Uh, and then Neo 2, I've never played on stream or any, like I've never recorded it either. Maybe one day. Don't things end up chasing me down this little area? Pretty sure something chases me. Yep. The hands. Oh, and the Albinorix.
trying to get used to claw grip and my hands are cramping after a couple hours it's sad it definitely uh takes some adjusting to do it but even then with all the thousands of hours that i've done this my hand still cramps it's just it's not a natural way to hold your hand in any way shape or form urge steel dagger i want you guys to know that you find an urge steel dagger on a dead body which is the same reward that kenneth height gives you for literally saving his fortress what the shit, Kenneth? You'd have loved the boss fights in Neo and one was better than two? See, I hear mixed reports on that all the time. I don't know. So There's a lot of people that say Neo 1 is better than 2, and then a lot of people also say Neo 2 is better than 1. So I don't know what to believe. One thing I can say is pretty much everyone universally says that Neo is better than Wo Long. <laughs> I think the only redeeming factor for me about Wo Long was the fight against Lu Bu. I think that was the single best boss fight in that game. And honestly, probably the only fun one. Is there any NPCs you should kill every playthrough? Uh, I don't know. I guess it depends on your perspective. Like a lot of people say, yes, you must kill Okina because you get rivers of blood, right? Like there's that. But as far as anyone else, I don't really, I can't think of anyone. You get Reduvia from Bloody Finger Narius, but if you're doing all or most bosses, you'll just get that by naturally pathing down that way anyway. Oh my stabbies, dude. Brother, can you maybe not stab me for a minute? the hell whoops whoops this guy's insane hey laura how's it going today I almost rolled right off that ledge That knight is always insane. I remember he almost killed me once on one of my deathless runs, too. Gostok? It depends on your perspective. Uh, Gostok, if you kill him, you can't complete, like, the rest of the quest that's related around him, and therefore you'll miss out on an ancient dragon smithing stone. But, that said, if you don't care about that so much, then yeah, I would just say, get rid of him. Put the horn in the bag, buddy. Oh, you fell. You survived that fall? I mean, it makes sense. He's literally made of airbag, so... He's literally made of airbag. Yeah, I'm happy to have you here, Laura. Near Automata played two hours. PC port is a disaster. Um... Yeah, it is pretty problematic. However, it is on Game Pass on PC as well, I believe, MD Legendary, and it is a much more stable port. So I would say if you do want to play it on PC, then maybe try it on Game Pass. Much can be said about the same for Fallout 3 as well. The Fallout 3 port is terrible on PC, but on Game Pass, it is much improved. 
Oh, you killed the man. How dare you? Actually, you want to kill these guys for me too? Okay, one more. Hit this guy. Oh, what a fella. What a guy, huh? With the big assist. Uh-oh. I can't believe I had enough stamina to pull all that off. You see what I mean about the gargoyle fights in this game, though? They're always in the worst arenas. The only good arena at all is the Valiant Gargoyle Duo one. All the others are on terrible landscapes like this. For such a large enemy, you would think they would put them in a better area to fight them. Instead, it's just all terribly uneven ground. So annoying. Luckily, I've had a shit ton of practice with these guys at this point, so I'm a little bit better about it, but my god. I can't even reach your head. My god, dude. You see what I mean? I can't even get the critical hit. I worked so hard to get that. And the game was like, nah, man, you good. Have this one, you little bitch. I missed. <sighs> terrible, terrible arenas with these gargoyles, man. What does that lever do? It opens up the door underneath. The doorway on the main road up the stairs with all the guards on it. It opens up that one. I can't remember. Can you parry this axe? I want to say yes. Let's figure that out. I'm pretty sure you can. Got a partial parry there. Not what I was in the market for. He do be spinning. Yup, get parried. Ah, too far away. There it is. Yeah, I'm not done exploring the city yet. I know there's more items out there. I know. Yeah, I've grinded these two guys as well, Howl, for uh, for their items. This is actually the only guy you can get the battle hammers from right here. Now. Ouch! Ooh. And you're dead to poison. <laughs> I love that so much. Ooh, battle hammer. Ooh, battle hammer. Aw, duelist helmet. Still? A good item to get here? You did what to these guys? Oh, you heard what I said, dude. I said what I said. I said I grinded them. I didn't, I didn't stutter. I usually do stutter, but I didn't that time. Hell yeah, Broku. Love to see it, man. Those parries look sick. Yeah, the curved sword parry is really nice. It has some of the least amount of parry frames in the whole game, but at least it looks cool. Okay. Let me go... Okay. I'll, um, words. Um, sis, I'm going to show you what door that lever opened. That one right there. This door is usually closed. 
right up until you pull that lever above up there. Hello? That guy said... No. Not allowed. Right now, I'm actually doing what you mentioned lately and just enjoying a new playthrough and try as much stuff as possible and farm some nice sets from enemies. Just enjoying the landscape sometimes. Limgrave is also my favorite place. There's a lot of good scenic stuff in this game, man, for sure. Glad you're enjoying it, embracing it, taking it all in. This is, uh, Albridge's set right here. Oh, I didn't kill Albridge and grab the Cypher Pata in the Round Table Hold either. Maybe we'll do that soon after we clear the rest of this little area. Anyways, let's team up with Bernal. I'm just going to keep walking at you. Oh my god, dude. Stop rolling away. Oh, I hit the wrong guy. The good news is, is it still poisoned him. So neat. Let's do this then. And that's how you get the Raging Wolf Armor set. What level would you recommend for DLC? Uh, it's going to be scaling differently from the rest of the game, so there is no recommended level. Always thought I missed something with that lever since we could open that door manually. You can actually cannot open that specific door manually. The the other door at the other end of the main road you can, but not the one up the stairs. Let's check over here first. Going well, James. Predictions on the final DLC boss? I'd imagine it's going to be Mesmer. What you guys making? Look, guys. Mushroom stew. That, sh that, that should be this character's name. Mushroom Stew. But Stew is spelled S-T-U. These two bads are getting as bad as Twitch now, damn. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't go that far. Twitch ads usually come in blocks of 90 or 180 seconds. YouTube ads are still like 20, 30 seconds. Pretty big difference at the end of the day. Doesn't mean that they're not awful, but...
What's up, Indy Hizzy? Why are you making putting at 3 a.m.? Because I've lost control of my life. Ah, uh, Rugrats. That is probably the most the most quotable moment in all of that show's history. in a moment. What's the time over there? 6.06 p.m. 18.06 if you're on 24-hour clock. Did I kill the golem up here already? I can't recall if I did on this playthrough or not. I guess final boss doesn't necessarily mean the hardest, right? Nope, not at all. I expect there to be a very tough side optional boss in the DLC, much like Melania of the base game. Oh, I didn't think I, I, I didn't kill the golem on this playthrough. That must have been my last one that I did. Yeah, this guy's still alive. Hey, Smiley. Unless it respawns. Yeah, that chest is closed. I didn't actually kill this one yet. Plug it in, plug it in. Blessed dear. They'll pull a Madeira on us again for sure. I certainly hope so, man. I certainly hope so. I need another new tough boss fight to learn. I crave that so much. This is Melania's tower, by the way. You have to defeat Melania, and then you can come here and activate her thing. And if you didn't know, it's the one in the middle of, the middle of nowhere. The one in the middle of the ocean, all the way out here. Yeah. Anyway, um, where to next? I guess we're going to go back to Avenue Balcony. What oh, boss do you have to defeat to unlock the portal and the door to the tower? Melania. That is Melania's divine tower. Shit, you know what? Um, no, no, no. I'm good here. I'm good here. We have some other business to attend to now. Some alternate business. Oh, actually, I gotta clean up up here first. There's so many things that need doing around here, man. Ow. This man's gonna kill me. Melania's great rune is garbage. Completely agree. Alright, you're gonna die by poison. I'm just gonna go. Enjoy your time. 
This is the thing about poison. You just kind of set it and forget it. And that guy, he's just kind of dead. And there's not much you can do about it. All he can do is just chase me down and hope that I just kind of come back and let him kill me. Yep, there he goes. See you later, dude. Hey, while you're over there messing around, I'm going to go kill your friend. I hope you don't mind. Whoopsie. Oh, wait, you got up here too? What the hell? That's cheating. You're a little poisoned and also shooting the railing. You doof. Oh. I didn't have stamina, and I was trying to run. Rip me. I've got around 1,700 hours, Ziku. What does a rune do? Every time you hit an enemy, it heals you a little bit, but the adverse effect is it makes your Estus flask, or I'm sorry, your, uh, your flask of crimson tears heal you less. It has a bit of a trade-off. But you do heal with every hit, but I would say the healing with every hit is not worth the actual straight-up heal of the flask. Royal Knight's Resolve, huh, bud? I love the guy just kind of watched while I stabbed his men. Damn it. I can never hit that parry, right? Yeah, with the shield and spear is the worst here. Yeah. Spear enemies are kind of tough to deal with. Oh, that still hit me. Oh, no, it was the arrow that did. Never mind. Fight me in the barn, idiot. Ouch. Never hit that parry right, my god. Oh my god, I couldn't see. That's one of my favorite things to do. Lure out their uh, guard break attack and then just parry it. Do they usually drop? No, there's no way this one guy drops that much, right? Did I just get an insanely good RNG drop? I got pretty much that entire armor set aside from the chest piece. I got the helmet, the greaves, and the gauntlets. That's not normal, right? I don't recall him ever doing that before. 
I think that was insanely good RNG. Like, I don't think I could possibly have better RNG on any one drop ever. How the hell is that man going to drop three pieces out of four of the entire armor set? Where am I? This is in uh, Lane Dell. Stone Sword Key, I think. Yep. Not normal? I didn't think so. It's been so long since I've been over here, like, I couldn't recall. That was insanely good RNG. Holy shit. <laughs> Someone's got the streamer cheats. Kind of cool to get an entire set like that. Granted, I didn't get the whole set. I didn't get the armor, but... Got everything but. That's cool. Cosmic Kitty, thank you for 18 months of membership. Welcome back. Hope you're doing great. Good to see you. Might be changed in a patch. Maybe. I've not been over here in so long that I can't honestly say. Up here we have the Sacred Wet Blade. As well as the Brick Hammer, I believe. Or just a regular hammer, rather. By my sword. And then in the throne room is the sanctified, or not sanctified, but the uh, coated swords. Have you played Lies of P? Yes, played it twice. Considering it's a great rune, they could have. Could have at least not gave the Estus debuff. You see, the thing is, if they didn't give it the Estus debuff, then it would just be what everyone uses in PvP. And that's the problem. Granted, they could probably balance it different, like they do a lot of other things separately. Because there are certain weapons that perform differently in PvE and PvP. They probably could have done the same for that, but... All the same, it is what it is. Haven't seen you do wield in so long? Yeah, it's been a while. What are you using track progress in this run? I'm not using any trackers. I don't have any thing going on. I'm doing this all out of memory, man. I have over 40 rather complete playthroughs. Already got that room. Did I get the thing on the balcony out here? Yes. Can't use great runes in PvP unless you're the host? Yeah, but that's just still. The fact of the matter is, even the host still gets that that big bonus, so it is what it is there, you know? It is still a thing. Forgot about that balcony up there. Let's go grab that. Where is that dog? There you are. Alright, one of you better drop this halberd when I come back. I forgot I'm going over here first. Hold up. Yeah, even as the host, if you get those perks, I mean, that would be... Especially because the host already has a major advantage, right? The host has the advantage of having a couple people with him a lot of the time. So if you just could get, like, one singular invader, plus you have that great rune, I mean, that's kind of nuts, right? Yes, hi. Oh, Jesus Christ, dude. Perfumer's bolts are insane. I want to parry you. It's been a long time since I've parried one of you guys. Let me parry you right now. Too early. Too early again. Damn it, man.
Hey. Ah, oh, dude, your animation is so shit. Oh. Sir, that's illegal. I will pull this off, guys. I will. Unless he dies to poison. Or if I die to that. Okay, I'm not I'm not pulling it off anymore. You gotta go, friend. <laughs> Fuck those guys, dude. God damn it. Pages suck. Hate those guys, dude. Hate them. Anyway, that area is clear. Let's go up the stairs over here now. Oh, that guy's gonna blow the horn. Wee wee. Item over here. What is it? A golden rune eight. Okay, I wasn't expecting to land that. It was kind of a panic maneuver. But, uh, you know, get hecked on. Alright, big risk parry. He's got Royal Knight's Resolve on. Let's go. Oh, yeah. What's the highest level you got into this game? Um, the highest level character I ever had was actually in a mod. The Ascended mod, which is like, like 218 or something. I don't really have a whole lot of interest in making high level characters. Isn't there a lion over here? There is. And a perfumer. Son of a bitch. dance. That's fun, man. I actually really like fighting the lions in this game. And this is a broken bridge. Can't go that way. Am I going to be Elden Beast or stop before Radagon? I think this playthrough, I'm actually going to stop after defeating Fire Giants. Um, just because I don't want to go to Farm Azula and set the tree on fire because I'm curious what happens before all of that, before entering the DLC. And then, after I complete that entire playthrough with the DLC, I will play through the DLC again with a character that already exists that's already beaten the entire game otherwise, like my Black Flame Monk. I just want to see if there's any differences between these two playthroughs, not to mention with a couple different builds, but it also gives me a good excuse to play the DLC more than once and just seeing if anything is different before and after the burning of the Erd Tree. We out here doing science. What up, Grit Nature? I had no stamina, man. Can you explain your build? I'm curious about your mushroom armor and the weapon abilities you're using. It's built around poison. The mushroom uh, crown that I'm wearing specifically gives me 10% more damage whenever I poison or rot someone. And then I also have a talisman that gives me the same buff, but with 20% instead of 10 so in total, I get 30% extra damage out of it whenever I poison or rot someone. And then from there, I'm getting stabbed by a guy with a big spiky spear while being shot at with a guy with electric arrows. Not very poggers. Ow! God damn it, dude. My everything hurts. But also, I'm just wearing the rest of, like, the mushroom set to just kind of fill out the entire, like, the aesthetic of the armor. Dude, I cannot parry you for the life of me. Please die. I also am working on getting some more levels so I can use, uh, 
the Scarlet Rot Dragon Breath too. I also have a little bit of bleed going on with some of my other weaponry, so that way if I need a different type of damage or just some extra damage on the side against a boss or something, I have that option. But mostly it's about the poison. Oof. What hit me there, the arrow or the sword? Oh, that time it was the, the arrow. God damn it, dude. Oh, I'm getting smacked. Bro, I am terrible with the parries right now. What is that delay? Screw you, dude. Just get out of here. Get out of my face. Knight's Greatsword, I'll take it. God damn, these parries are terrible. Screw you, dude. Get out of here. The actual delay on that huge two-handed thrust with that sword is so annoying to deal with. I've never been good at parrying that attack. It gets me almost every time. You'd think that the sword's making contact with you, so you just kind of parry, you know? Hey, Thrash, how you doing, man? It's the whole third degree burns with fungus look. <laughs> Big on the runways this season. True. So hot right now. That was a really low backstab. Yeah, sometimes it goes a little bit too low. Bolt of Grand Sax. Yeah, I'll be getting the Bolt of Grand Sax in a bit. We have to go all the way up for that, though. That's a bit of a different spot. We have to jump up or jump down to it from. Ow, what the? F I'm two, two inches away from this guy's face, right? And he's like, yo, I'm going to throw this pot at him. God damn, dude. Nice flute, idiot. He was just playing music. He didn't deserve that. Here's the thing. He did deserve it. Okay, back on the main road again. The black bow is over here. Yes. Okay, I know we still have to go into the sewers. We have to go up as well. But I'm going to go up first because I want to kill Morgot before going into the sewers. So that way I can go down into the Flame of the Frenzy area too. 
I need to remember as well that if I am going to have the Flame of the Frenzy going, like if I want this one character to have access to all the endings, I need to make like a, I need to duplicate the save state so I can reload them at any time, like have backups just to, just for the sake of science. I want to see if things change with the Flame of the Frenzy, uh, both before and after talking to Melina and also like curing it. This save file is going to be pretty important for all of this. Though, again, I doubt there will be any changes there. I'm just doing it for the sake of the science of it. Okay, I think that's all good to go. Yeah, the grace is closed, so I can go back for fr uh, Flame of the Frenzy anytime. Yeah. Do I need to speak with Corin before I do the whole gold free thing? Ah, maybe I should do that just for the sake of doing it. I don't think he's at the round table hold anymore as is, but let's just go here just in case. Oh, he is. Okay. From here, he's going to leave, and I know right where he's going to go. Let me see if there's any weapon upgrades. What up, Wyatt? How you doing? No, 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 no. Oh, don't pay me. Just lay out. Lay out your arms, then. Oh, God, I can upgrade the hell out of myself here. Okay, guys, before I take the next step here, I'm going to take a quick break because I have to pee so bad. So, uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, dudes.
Okay, I'm back. I'm back. All right, first things first, we got to get Mad Tongue Alberich down here. I remember when I first fought this guy, it was kind of insane because I was going for parries when I really shouldn't be going for parries against this guy. He's kind of weird with his uh, weapon, but he is a really cool enemy all the same. He even does a little bow, but I'm going to stab him right in the back. Good night, say. He does have a pretty cool build, though. What up, Jay Chang? Almost 53,000. Yeah, we're very close to 53,000 subscribers, guys. I have a major goal, guys. I... <laughs> So as you guys know, I'm gonna, it's story time, okay? I'm gonna I'm gonna get real personal here for a bit. So you guys remember back in November, on my birthday, November 24th, I decided that I wanted to start a second channel. Starting the second channel was both a good and bad idea because it was something where I wanted a channel that was dedicated to making videos because I wanted to learn how to make better videos. I had a vision for content with my videos that I really wanted to enact on, but I went about it in a in a weird way to where I don't have I don't like I don't have anyone that works on my channels with me. It's only me. And I've been paying someone only recently to make some thumbnails for my channel. And that's only that's only very, very recently. Um and so because of this, because of the nature of this, I stretched myself really, really thin. I was you know, streaming around like 30 to 40 hours a week, right? Plus, I was playing games after stream to make videos on them. And in order to get like the amount uh, amount of content I needed for these videos, I needed to play between 15 and 20 hours of any one game to basically edit down to about an hour of time to make one of these videos. So with that, the editing of the videos would take somewhere between like 10 and 15 hours, if not a little bit longer to put together as well. So as you can imagine, I was spread extremely thin. Like I was, <laughs> I was busting my ass to make this work. And I do think that it ultimately resulted in me getting very sick. And that's why I had the, uh, the recent big sickness. And since getting over that sickness or getting through that sickness, it made me open my eyes and realize that I was kind of spreading myself too thin on what I wanted to do with my content in general. It was kind of... Like, I, I think back on it now, and I just, I think of myself as an idiot. However, I did learn a lot from this. I made 10 videos for my other channel. And since then, uh, that those 10 videos have taught me so much of how to edit this type of video faster, as well as just how to do certain things within editing itself. I learned a lot in that 10 videos. It was a lot of experience. Right around 100 hours of editing total has taught me a good margin of stuff, which I'm very happy about. Um, but obviously since then, since getting over the sickness, I have really reimagined what it is that I want to do. And so I am still making this type of video, but I'm putting it on this channel here, my, my main channel here. So it's something that is just getting underway, but I have put a couple of videos on my channel already that have the same editing style. One around Lies of P. I have one for uh, a two for grounded on my channel here now, and then I um, I have some for some other games as well. Uh, one is for like a game called Core Devourer, which is just like a stupid made-up story that I just kind of made around the game just for fun of it. What was the other game I did this for? There's another one too. Hold on, let me look. Let me look here. I can't remember. Let me see. Um, there's the Lies of P one. There's the Core Devourer one. 
There was oh, you know what? It was for Redfall right here, this one. Right there. And so this type of video specifically hasn't like it hasn't like done great. I get like most of my streams get more views than this, but my goal is to be able to make more views around this type of video here. So again, if you guys haven't checked out the homepage of my channel yet, I'm showing this again because it is important to me. Whenever I'm live streaming or there is a scheduled live stream, it will show up at the top here, as you can see. But also, I've got like, you know, all my latest videos here, and then I have them all separated by year. All the games that I've played throughout the last few years on my channel. The most recent year, 2024, this year, if you click on it, it'll show all the stuff I've done so far. Obviously, this year is only a few months in, so I don't have a whole lot there yet, but that will grow throughout the year. And then the, the whole year of 2023, look at all these different games. Look at all these different games that I've played. Look at all that, right? The year 2022, look at all this. Look at all this content. A lot of people don't realize I have all this content on my channel. Isn't this insane? A lot of people have no idea this is a thing. So if you're looking for some stuff to watch, it would mean so much to me. You guys remember the Callisto Protocol? <laughs> it would mean so much to me if you can go back and watch some of this stuff. Just check it out. A lot of people don't realize all the games I have played on my channel. A lot of really cool and interesting games too that a lot of people do not realize are out there. So, maybe after stream tonight you could check some of that out. But I have learned a lot about myself and like the content that I want to make. And my goal right now is indeed to hit 100,000 subscribers. That is my main goal, but my next major goal is to make it make it so my videos can get five, or I'm sorry, 10,000 views plus on the regular. Like that's my major goal right now. I would I, I I'm going to be working very hard to achieve this. So my ask for you guys is whenever I'm not streaming, take a look at some of my some of my videos, see what you like, see what you don't. Give me your feedback because your feedback is only going to help me get better. Obviously, be level-headed about it. Don't go, oh, your videos suck, dude. You need to get better. Give me genuine feedback. I want to know what you like and what you don't like. Say, I didn't like how uh, how long this pause was. I didn't like the music of this part. Um, I, not so much about the game. If you don't like a game, that's different. If you don't like a certain game, it is going to be what it is, right? But I do want to know what it is that you do want to see overall, right? Like, that. that is the big thing. And so I need your feedback in this regard. I would say specifically the most important videos to check out are the most recent two grounded videos. Those are the ones that I have the most effort into. And it's only going to get better from there, obviously. But your feedback on the most recent two is going to be the most important. Not an idiot, you tried something, it didn't work, and you changed your focus, seems smart to me. Well, I mean, yeah, but I think a lot of it was just like my my entire mental state was so cloudy, and I had no no idea at the time that it was. I didn't realize like how like I was so physically sick that it was making me mentally weird. And like that that is my uh my big point there. It was making me I don't want to say I was feeling desperate, but I want something so much to succeed that it makes me act poorly on my on the things that I wanted to do, right? And so, yeah, I'm just trying to like shift things around to be not only healthier about what I do, but also be better about what I do. Give me a sword spear, damn it. One of you give it to me right now. Also, uh, the guy that fell off the side might have actually had one, but uh, he fell into the abyss down there, so there's no way I'll ever know. Just because you said not to, oh, your videos suck, dude. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Have you played Astroneer? I have never played it, though, no. My wife has, and she loves it, but I myself have never played it. Look, there he is, guys. You see him up there? There he is. The, the gold mask. I love that you can see him from so far away. That mask is literally shining. Yeah, that is true, Laura. I, I have learned so much about not only my own body in the last few months, but also like what I like to do with my content. Which I can say I'm glad that it happened. I just wish that kind of everything happened sooner so I could have learned sooner. I don't have any, like, major regrets around the idea at all. I just wish that I learned all of this about myself sooner.
Love the grounded vids. I'm glad you do. There's going to be two more coming out over the next couple of days as well. Tomorrow and the next day. Okay, uh, something just happened with the commands there. I pressed L2 and I rolled. That was very strange. I did not press B at all. I pressed L2. That was very odd. And the thing is, too, like, if you go back, it looked like it was a light roll, too. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I, I was seeing things, but it looked like I did a light roll there. I don't know. That was odd. It was very odd. Your content sucks because I ate something spicy and I'm feeling hateful. <laughs> That's fair. Whatever is the most, <laughs> please, I implore you, continue. Continue your reflection. Oh, I'm a little shaky. Hey, Jean-Philippe. The must. Well, until he sees now, the must. The golden, the name of who? The must. His finger. Curse my the master. Oh. Who? The must. His finger. You can see some older games played like Legend of Dragoon or Chrono Trigger or something. There are some older games that I who? did miss that maybe one day I'll play. Why we were on the... Who? The must. His finger. I kind of would like to start a series at some point. Like, games I missed or something. Could be cool. Did you need... Maybe someday. Do you have the magma whip? Not yet, but I have done the invasion for it. I just got to go turn it in. But now that I've got that, I'm going to reset again at the West Capitol Rampart. I'm going to go up this branch and hope that I get a Guardian Sword Spear, kill Gold Free, and then Morgoth. And then I will go turn in these uh, invasions that I've done to get the items out of them. <laughs> yeah, sure, Algrenon, sure. I think you're especially good at explaining mechanics, how-tos, and such. I think I am too, but I don't want that to be overall the type of content that I am known for. I would rather entertain than teach. That's not to say that I can't still teach people. Like, I teach people a lot of things during my live streams. But I think I want my videos specifically to be around just entertainments. Telling stories. I actually really like doing that. That's what I like doing the most. So, I want to keep that going. Isn't this when you need to have high int and use that specific spell, the specific statue? Or is that later? This is the area in which you do that, yeah. Just after defeating Gold Free here. Which, I gotta get stuff uh, together for that soon, too. But I wanna get these guys out of the way first. Law of Regression, yes. Ow. Stamina! Stamina again! I think I might need a little bit more endurance on this build. I'm constantly running out of stamina after a full combo. I would like to have enough after a full combo to at least roll one more time. Let me throw two levels in that real quick. Just to see if that helps. Hey, 
Hey Greenies, I have no questions for today. Just wish you a really great time and massive thanks for the streaming schedule. I don't need to worry about even about evening content anymore. Hey, that's awesome, Greenies. And hey, if I ever do have a, you know, uh, if I ever do have a day where I'm not available, like I'm not live streaming, but you still want content to watch, there is still stuff on my channel for you to take a look at. I've got all sorts of videos on my channel waiting for your eyeballs. What up, Fox? Welcome back. Damn. I don't need to do, the, do it this way, but I want to. This jump is such a pain in the ass to make. This hasn't been patched out, has it? I'm so close to getting it. Whoops. Again, you don't have to do this, but... Eh. Alright, I give up. I give in. Foin. See, we're on the other side of it now. It only saves a few seconds, but... Yeah. Was Ghost of Tsushima a full playthrough, or what did you think looking forward to checking out your video on it? So the thing with Ghost of Tsushima is, Robert, is I call it my my uh, bad omen game. Every time I've tried to play that game, something goes seriously wrong in my real world. Uh, there was a time when, uh, when I played it where one of my cats got extremely sick, for example. Uh, another time when my mom got extremely sick when I started playing it, and so the, like my mom had a cancer scare the last time I played it. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's like my Bad Omen game. I've actually never done a full playthrough of that game. However, I will be doing a full playthrough of that game when it comes out on PC. Which I think it comes out in May? I believe. Is that correct? It comes out in May on PC? I want to say like May 21st or something like that. May 16th. So I will be doing a full playthrough of it on PC. No matter what happens, I'll be getting through it. I've always wanted to play through more of the game, but I just never have. Love your mom. How's she been? What about Devin and Corey? They're doing well. They're all doing great, man. Nice roll, dude. Worth it. Yep, this build fucks. <laughs> if I can handle more gods so quickly with it, then I'm pretty pretty confident this build's good. Consider doing some raids, maybe to Lobos or Chase the Bro, some bigger Twitch streamers. I generally don't. Um, I just, I don't know. I feel weird about it. I don't like, I don't like throwing my channel's name and community at other people with expectations that they're going to do it back for me i'm not i'm not into using people uh for like using them as a means to an end you know 
And I will say, I do admit that I very much so live on my own little island when it comes to making content. I do have a couple content creator friends like Daz and Fire. But overall, I very much so do live in my own little content world, I will admit. And it's not to say that I don't like these guys. I do. I just... I don't like throwing myself at people with expectations that they're going to do something for me, you know? And also, generally speaking, I would say probably a good, like, 90 plus percent of the people that have watched my Elden Ring content already know these people exist because they've been around and making content in Souls-like games for a lot longer than I have. But also, I do a large variety of stuff anyway, so it's just kind of the way of it. Okay, now, Law of Regression. Let's go to the Turtle Pope. No, Benino, it, I, it's fine. I just am not really into the whole idea. That's all, man. I do have a good amount of, like, past experience with that whole idea, though, and there has been many times where it's gone in a negative way. Unfortunately, and I mean this in the best way possible, this is going to sound extremely negative, but unfortunately, there are a lot of content creators out there that love creating drama. Love it. I myself have been in the center of some very weird content creator drama, and I hate the idea of it. And I never want it to happen again. And since that has happened, I have basically withdrawn myself away from most other content creators. I have very little trust overall when it comes to this. And it's not anyone else's fault except for the specific people involved in my past. But people learn from their experiences, right? I have been accused of some very awful things that are very much so not true as far as being like a very hateful person and i am not a hateful person i'm not but people have come up with these things on me based uh, on very weird theories in the past so yeah it's just uh one of those things where people make shit up to make themselves look better yeah anyway we got law of regression i need to go get the here for intelligence the only thing you hate is video games fucking hate video games dude why'd you change your profile picture because it's just one of my emotes it fits my entire channel better does the pro uh, here's a question for you does the profile picture on a channel matter this is a genuine question i'm not like negating what you're saying i do want to know your opinion on this does a profile picture on a channel matter to you? And if so, why? Calling people racist, sexist, etc. as a way to a way that some scumbags try to gain clout, yeah. Yes. And also, if you're reasoning that a um, that an, like a profile picture matters because of recognizability, then I completely disagree. Because if you right right next to the profile pictures is almost every single time is going to be the channel's name anyway. And even so, if you don't recognize the profile picture, then you should probably follow your curiosity and hover your mouse or your finger over that channel just to see what channel it is anyhow. So before you say recognizability, don't say recognizability. <laughs> mm, we got that. What else do I need? I already have the Twin Sage Mask, which will give me plus six. That'll be plus 16 altogether. What do I need for this spell? Is it 37? Why can't I see the details here? There we are, 37. So I would get 16. 
out of that stuff. Plus seven. That gives me what? 23. What else can I do to get more intelligence? What else can I do to get more intelligence here? I mean, I could respect, but I'd rather not. <laughs> Visit your local library. How'd you get the bandit's curved sword? You farm it from the skeletons that wield it. It's a rare drop. Ooh, that's rough, Southern. Uh, what else? Dude, there's something else I can do, isn't there? Why am I not remembering this? Profile picture is it like a logo for your channel, part of your identity. Well, yeah, sure. But like if you're say if you're following a channel and the profile picture changes, then if you have that curiosity, like if you see that in your sub box, like your subscribed channels and it's something that you don't recognize, then obviously you should look at it so you can further recognize it. Right. You're not going to like, oh, well, this guy changes profile picture. Fuck this guy. You know, <laughs> I feel like if you do that, then like, I feel like there's a deeper issue to resolve there. Level up? Oh no, there's some, I think I think there's something else I can do to raise it is what I'm saying, but I can't remember what. Or am I crazy? Twin Sage plus six, plus six, Grafted Sword, Ash plus five. Oh, Stargazer Talisman. That's what I'm thinking of. And then Marika's Seal. Yes. That will be plus another eight. Which would put me at 31. I would still need six more. The Sword Ash would give me five. I'd still be missing one. I guess I could throw one in a level real quick just for the sake of it. It might be easier to just respec. Do I have two Larval Tears? Where do I even see larval tears? I've got five. I think I'm just going to respect to do it real fast. I think it'll be easier. Easier and faster than uh, trying to find this plus one extra. I do have the double headed sorcery mask, but that gives me plus six. That's already considered. What I'm trying to say is that the demeanor of your channel can should reflect your videos. If your profile picture is childish looking one, it, it, I have noticed it does attract more young people. That is not completely true, though. There's plenty of, like, animation channels that, like, them alone, just because they're animated and have an animated, like, profile picture, that it's content for kids. There are plenty of adult shows that are animated, for example. Think of things like Archer, for example. That is not a kid's show, right? A certain timeline of Ren and Stimpy, not a kid's show, right? Animated is not equivalent to childish. Hell, there's even a lot of, like, anime straight out of Japan that's not for children, too. Family Guy, yeah. That is not inherently true. And this is not a new concept, either. This has been a concept <laughs> for... A very long time. Animation is not equivalent to child content. No shape or form. You'll play Baldur's Gate 3 soon? I do want to make a video series on it at some point. I always say animation is a medium, not a genre. Exactly. Exactly. Um, What was I going to do? <laughs> hentai, yeah, hentai, there you go. <laughs> South Park, yeah, South Park, definitely not for kids. 
Oh, I forgore. I forgore what was going to do. Oh, right. Let me just do this Belfry thing right here, since we're in the vicinity. I don't think I actually... There's only two places that I need to go. The third one goes to... Or one of them goes to Far Missoula. I don't think there's any specific item that I need in Far Missoula at this site of it. But I do need to go to the beginning of the game. That little church area. And then there's the other one that goes to... Uh... Oh no, I'm thinking those are both the same area. What am I on about? I think I only need to go to one of these. Then again, I don't really need to. I just am going to for the items. What up, Vincent? But also, you have to keep in mind that my profile picture previously did not fit my branding whatsoever either. It was just a helmet of some guy from Halo Reach. Halo Reach is a game that I not only do not enjoy, I just like the art of the helmet, and it was just there as a filler until I put something else there and completely forgot about it for a very long time. Whereas the, the profile picture I have now is much more fitting for everything else I have going on the channel. If you take a look at my emotes, for example, it is much more aligned with my branding. It is literally one of my emotes. There's only a talisman at Farmazula. What talisman is it? Yeah, I can see that, Laura. I was a fan of the older pick. I mean, I like it too, but it doesn't really fit the, the entire rest of my channel. So, I mean, it is what it is. I personally think that people are making way too big a deal out of it. <laughs> I What I personally think is that there's too many people that are not familiar with the concept of just not liking change. That's what I think. Which, don't, don't fret. That is the nature of humanity. Many people do not like change. We are specifically designed to not like change because change is different, and we as humans like familiarity because it's what helped us survive. Being in familiar settings and surroundings help us understand everything around us to be less afraid of it. And we have evolved past having to worry about survival for the most part because, you know, I, I'm not saying this is universal. There are parts of the world where this is not true. But in first world parts of the world, we have evolved past that entire idea. But a lot of people don't realize that we are just ingrained to see it that way. And have a hard time seeing past it. The Stormhawk King. Okay, that's everything here. Let's go back to the four Belfries. What was the item in Far Missoula? Anyone know? Reduces physical damage. So it's like a Dragon Crest thing, maybe? Dragon Crest Great Shield or something? Yo, Dom, they have the five bones, dude. Josh Benowal says, I caught a stream, can't wait for the DLC. So nice to see everyone to be back in the Not Cult. Welcome back, bud. Welcome back. Night Sky Unceasing. Oh, this is where the uh, the Crucible Knight is, right? Pretty sure this is where the Crucible Knight is. Right underneath Moog's Palace. It is the Dragon Crest? Okay. Pearl Drake Talisman? Okay. I'm getting conflicting results. <laughs> yeah, that's the Crucible Knight right down there. Looking up at Moog's Palace. Right there, guys. That right there is Moog's Arena. That's where you fight Moog. Hmm. 
the legs. Wait, what? Yeah, that, that's Moog's palace right there. Absolutely. That little ledge right there, that you can get to that after you fight Moog, which looks down on the rest of the area. What's down here? It's a crucible night right there. Also, whatever this item is. Maybe a cookbook or something. Ah, modeled necklace. Ever checked out the show Mayor of Kingsman? It's great. I can recommend it. I can recommend it. I never have. I've never seen it. Moog's Palace, part of Nakron. It's part of Shafra, technically. Shafra is right down there, as you can see. Walked into it. Just go phase two, please. The realist ranch. Hello. That was weird. <laughs> Whoopsie. Does he drop anything special? He doesn't. It's just a crucible night that does nothing special for you. You know, I thought about this, guys. The uh, the DLC trailer does show the player character utilizing aspect of the Crucible wings. That's not something that the player can use in the base game without a mod right now. I don't even know if there's a mod to actually apply it. I, I, would, I would think there is, but apparently it's going to be in the DLC, which has the implication of finding more Crucible Knights in the expansion area. You guys think there will be any like new type of Crucible Knight out there? Maybe wielding a different type of weapon? Pretty cool implication, you know? Crucible Assassin. Crucible Knight, Black Knife Assassin crossover event. Crumbling Lands. Alright, let's go see what Talisman's out here. Ah, yes. The Crumbling Lands. Very cool. I almost missed that jump. Um, why do I feel like this fall is going to kill me? Yeah, we should be fine. Yeah, we're good. Oh, you mother bitch.
I'm gonna parry you. Are you ready? Let's get on even ground. I can't parry that attack, sir. Too early. Too early again, Sag. You can parry these guys, right? I do believe. Damn. What a delayed attack. Oof. Oh my god, can you delay that anymore? What are you, Morgoth Jr.? Oh, um, maybe it's not parryable? I have a backstab. What up, Tyler? Okay, yeah, I don't think it's parryable. At least when he two hands it, it's not. Okay, well, I got a backstab animation, but no actual backstab. Sick. I'm gonna try one more time. Okay, I give up. That was awful. God awful. Did I grab the talisman already without realizing it, or is there more to this area? It's been so long since I've been out here. Oh, that might be it right there. Pearl Drake Talisman. The weakest variant of it at that. Okay. All right. Okay, so let's go back here now. Let me go turn in some of these invasions that I got. Hey, Buck, how you doing, man? If you it cannot. Is Isn't one like this a boss in one of the first caves of the game? Yes. You hunt me, sir? Oh, it's I'll give to have some red. Cheers for that. Uh, I didn't do Bernal's invasion. I did patches. If you it cannot. He is parable? Yeah, I think it was just time to get bad. If you follow this, it cannot. Hello again. <laughs> Sharper than I was just holding. There you go. Thanks. Didn't I do another? Oh, I did Bernal's invasion. Let me speak to him real quick. I don't think anything changes there, but we'll speak with him anyway. I have the reward. Take it. Oh, right. I, oh, oh, dude, I forgot Gelmir's Fury actually exists. Well. 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 If you follow, it cannot. Okay. And then Raya, let's speak with her. And then from there, we can continue Mount Galmir a little bit. Raya's no longer here. She left. Never mind. She's right here. The serf entered perhaps if you discover. Okay. So let's go ahead and make our way to the Godskin Noble.
been a while since I parried one of these guys. Apparently, I still got the timing down. You know of any way to cheese the Beast Lord or whatever his name is? You talking about Garonk, the clergy beastman? Um, I don't know. But I will say though, like in if you're talking about him in the Kalid area in that temple, you don't even need to do that much damage to him in order to like make him stop. Like that's not a straight up fight. He just kind of gets angry until you do enough damage to get him to stop, which isn't a lot to be honest. Like, literally, like, a fifteenth of his health or so. That's it. But if you are talking about the main fight with Malaketh and Faramazula... Um... Only thing I can think is to just use status effects to make him easier. Uh, just, you know try to maybe poison him you can scarlet rot him as well so if you have uh, access to the dragon breath scarlet rot thing then you can make quick work of him with that the big thing about garonk is he doesn't give you a whole lot of time to like counter attack right you just got you really have to pick and choose the right moments I will say the best moment to attack him is when he drags his blade on the floor and then does like a very big, like very, very big swing with it because then he like takes a moment to even move after that. So if you can position it well to actually get it, like get behind him when he's doing that, you can land like two, three big hits in. That is the single best moment to attack him. I actually don't even need to fight this guy. I think it's Crimson Talisman plus one in here. Yes. Oh! I don't know why I was thinking that you couldn't fit through that door, but man, was I wrong. You good, Jeremiah? I realize you could roll through the abductors. Yeah, it's a, they're they're really weird. I will say, if you want to make quick work of them, use lightning. Whether it's lightning imbuement on your weapon or just lightning incantations, it makes quick work of them. Or wait until they open up the insides and try to do that grab. When they do that grab, you can dodge it and then counterattack. They take a lot of damage. They're very weak when you they open up like that. But in general, anything that is covered in metal is weak to lightning. The, uh, the figures that he's typing in chat, guys, are just, like, from, uh, alt number pad codes. Yeah. 
If he's just gonna spam, then just ban him. Love hip hop one day? Nah, not my jam. Just play with ASCII codes back in '97. Yep, big same. I remember back in my day. It's been 84 years. Oh, I just Goomba stomped him to death. Nice. <laughs> it fell right on his head and he died. Welcome to Mario's world, bitch. None of the weapons, talismans, etc. Not yet on this character. But I have on other characters, yes. A volcanic stone. Have you streamed playing The Witcher 3? I did back when I was streaming exclusively on Twitch. I don't have a playlist of it on my channel here, if that's what you're asking. Though I kind of wish I did. I hate that attack, man. Get your ass on land here, man. Come on. Yep, keep swinging your sword where it's not going to reach me. Good job, buddy. Not what I wanted to do there at all. Cool. What a guy. What a guy. Very cool. I hate that guy so much. Oh my god. I went the wrong way. <laughs> Nobody remember. Oh, everyone remembers the game. They're just trying not to acknowledge it. You a Triss or a Yen guy? Uh, the answer to this question is yes. Yes, I am a Triss guy. Yes, I am a Yen guy. Is Triss your type or is Yen your type? Yes.
Miyazaki just confirmed the Godskin song is actually hip hop. You've been hip hopping. <laughs> you know, if it is hip hop, that's cool, man. Maybe it's the one hip hop song that I like. All right. <laughs> it's the one. <laughs> Miyazaki just confirmed it. Yep, it's hip hop this whole time, dude. Holy shit. That's a somber five over there. Ow. Ow. Stop. Black Flame Gauntlets. Very good. Very cool. What's up, Anne Mary? Hey, Josh. Morgan or Liliana? A great question. Of course, the answer is yes. All right, I don't have my buff here, but... Godskin Nobel. Perry, Josh. Good job, dude. Poison damage ridiculously low. You realize that throughout the entire time of that fight, that poison probably did at least, I don't know, 1,000 to 2,000 damage all by itself. That is that many attacks that I did not have to do. Again, people severely underestimate the poison in this game. Sure, did I need the poison to actually win the fight? No. Did it make the fight that much faster? Yes, it did. Don't sleep on poison, man, I'm telling you. Do not discredit it. It does surprisingly large amounts of damage when you're not even considering it. Trust me. What up, Cindermind? People sleep on poison in way too many games way too often. You have to remember that if it's on your weapons and it applies passively, it's doing damage passively. There are stronger things than poison, that's all? Well, I mean, sure. But you're also not considering that it's passive damage that's happening over time without you even paying attention to it. Damage over time exists in video games for a reason. In fact, damage over time is often one of the strongest things in a lot of action-adventure games and MMOs but people don't really use it often because it's passive damage and don't think it's all that good. I'm telling you, man, don't sleep on it. It's better than you think. Just because it's doing small increments of damage every tick doesn't mean that that doesn't add up. Rot damage is also damage over time, but it's just better? Yes, sure. But also, did you know that you can stack rot and poison together? 
It doesn't have to be one or the other. They are not mutually exclusive. You also can't just put rot on anything you want like you can with poison on most things. Rod is on a very few select things. Damn. Parking an apostle? Nice, I like that. Drop me the fire sword right now! Damn, no fire sword, guys. I tried so hard and got so far. But in the end, it didn't even matter. Raya should be right in this room. She's not right in this room. Sag. It's crazy. The amount of people that sleep on damage over time. It really is. Isn't there an item of some kind down here? I thought there was an item down there. I guess not. I don't think people sleep on it, but rather play stronger builds. I mean, <laughs> I think I feel like that's an easy cop out. Oh, well, I would rather just swing the weapon one or two more times. But did you know that even when an enemy is poisoned, you can still swing your weapon one or two more times? And you're getting that extra damage on the side anyway? Crazy concept. Insane concept, I know. Again, damage is not mutually exclusive to different things. You can actually stack all of them up and be much more effective. I'm not saying you have to do it by any means. If you choose not to, that's cool too. There's all sorts of ways to play the game. But it is a viable way to play the game all the same. This is the only enemy in the game right here that drops this staff. Ouch. Unfortunately, it's a pain in the ass to farm. How do you know what an enemy is weak to? Is there somewhere in the game that tells you that or I just don't know about? Um, no, it's just that every weapon, when you put certain elements on it, has a certain build up on it. Like if you look at the bottom, because I have it's Bandit's Poisoned Curve Sword, the passive effect at the bottom says Cause and Poison Build Up 87, which means that every hit applies 87 points of poison and every single enemy in the game has its own resistances and weaknesses. 
I don't know what, where the line is on what something would be overly resistant versus weak to, aside from the amount of times you have to hit it for that uh, effect to apply. And every type of enemy has its own number. Like I think Melania, for example, you can you can poison and rot her, but I think the value is like 1500 or something like that. So that means I would have to hit her enough to build up that value. Well, you know, because my sword has it on there at 87, I would have to hit her a certain number of times to build up to that 1500 or whatever it is in order for her to become poisoned. Basically, it requires lots of experimentation to figure it out, but generally speaking, you don't have to worry about that in the modern age. After a while, the game is out, a lot of people have already figured this stuff out through all the experimentation that they have done personally. That's the third seedbed curse. How many total seedbed curses do I need for Dung Eater's ending? Is it four or five? Actually, don't need to fight that guy. Five? All right, we've got three. And I believe there's one in the Hay Leak Tree area. And we get one from this quest line itself after... Uh, What's-his-face gets killed by Dung Eater, right? I think. Ouch. Also, also Itachi, here's something else to consider when it comes to poison. When I poison a rotten enemy, I do get additional attack damage. Whenever you see that glow happen after I poison an enemy, look at this. Look at this right here. If you see, it says, raises attack power when something nearby suffers from poison or rot on the mushroom crown, right? That's 10% damage buff from that. And then I get another 20 from this right here. Kindred of Rot's Exaltation. Poisoning a rotten vicinity increases attack power. That's a 20%. So in total, I'm getting 30% extra attack power whenever I poison a rotten enemy. So not only are they taking the passive damage, but I'm also getting for 20 seconds that much more damage put out too. Which I forgot to put under the talisman, by the way. I forgore. And that is an intrinsic part of my build too. So it's not like it's only the poison that I'm getting damage out of here. I'm getting that much more physical damage too. There's not a whole lot of things out there that can say they give you a singular 30% extra damage in this game. I'll oh, get out of here with that. It's not bad when you see the poison damage is low. Well, I mean, if you if poison were to do like instantaneous damage, like say bleed or something, it wouldn't really make sense, right? But at the end of the day, with damage over time, a poison actually does more damage than, say, Bleed or Frostbite do most of the time in a single proc as well. But also, something else too, is I got Poison Moth Flight. If you don't know what Poison Moth Flight does, it is essentially this. Basically, I do that, and if they're already poisoned, it does a massive burst of damage similar to, say, Bleed. So it's a big burst of damage as well, which I can incorporate as part of my combo after they're poisoned. So if I do that, say say I poison an enemy, they're taking damage over time. Say I let that happen for like 15 seconds, I attack them a bunch of times in that 15 seconds for 30% extra damage, and then end the combo with Poison Moth Flight before that 20 seconds is up, I am doing thousands upon thousands of extra damage. It's actually a huge damage spike. So not only are they taking that big extra damage uh, spike, but also 15 to 20 seconds of extra damage over time on top of it. That's free damage. 
It's actually really good. If you look at it as one tick at a time, sure, it's low damage, but when you have 15 to 20 seconds of poison damage, it adds up to be quite a bit. I'm not saying it's the best build in the game, but it is highly effective. And considering that many people that play this game never use poison, I think it's kind of fun to make a build that stands out and is quite different from what everyone else is doing. I missed. Ah, oh, I got hit by both ends of that. Yo, Chris, 25 months. Thank you, Urban. Are you proud of me, Dad? Always. Thanks for 25 months, dude. Oh, I thought you died, son of a bitch. And you bamboozled me. Inquisitors, uh, Girandol. I have no idea how to say that word. Is it Girandol, Girandol, Girandoli, Girandoli? I don't know, dude. It's a long stick with candles at the end of it. I don't know. What up, Devin? Is it June, June 21st yet? Yes. Yes, it is. It's June 21st right now. Surprise! Ice Mist spell works on Melania. It does. Ice is very effective against Melania. Ice, fire, and bleed. Okay. Let's go back here again. DLC releases on your birthday. Nice, dude. Nice. If it cannot... Yeah, save. That's a good call. Yep. All right, so you don't do anything. Oh, wait, hold on. You just got something. Come here. Really? Oh, my lady. Was I not torn by... I remember... Funny. There we go. Now her quest will advance. I saw the same dialogue, and so I didn't think she was advancing it. Hold on. Is Diallo still in here? Diallos left again, too. Are you down in Jarberg yet? Twin Blade with Black Flame Tornado, Ash of War just destroys Placidus Axe. I think pretty much uh, anything gets destroyed by that. It does do percent based damage. And because of the constant overall proc of that Black Flame effect, it is just very high damage against everything. All right, he mentioned Diallo, so he should be in here. Well, there he is. Are you full of beans? Oh, I have to say, you've got, as you see, left the volcano, even a fool like... Do you pity me? A few pity me. Do you pity me? Happy birthday. Nice, dude. Thanks. I would say Black Flame Tornado is up there as one of the strongest things in the entire game. I think it's cool, it looks cool, but I would say, like, playing with it just kind of feels bad. Like, sure, it's highly effective, but is it fun? Eh. 
A fool? Do you pity me? It's fun for a little while, and then it gets stale. Happy birthday. Thanks, dude. You need time? Oh, I'm not talking about timing it or anything like that. It's easy to time. You can use it on virtually anything as long as you, like, find that window. That's not the problem with it. I think it's too strong. I think it's overtuned, is what I'm saying. Uh. So. I want to wait to kill Rykard for a while. Let me speak with Patches again real quick. Yeah, I, I've already got the Serpent Bone Blade. I'm sticking with uh, Curved Swords, though, because I like them so much. If you it cannot... I've got Poison Moth Flight already on it. No. I haven't. She has no... Has she gone off? Why won't she... May not as the... If she have her to purge... But also, uh, Poison Moth Flight itself applies Deadly Poison, too. It applies Deadly Poison itself, um, as long as you, that's what procs the poison. Alright, so Zariah is now out there. Elgernon, oh, thank you for the two dollars. Says happy birthday. Yo, thanks, man. I appreciate it. I think. <laughs> I think. So there's synergy? Yeah, there is synergy. Poison Moth Flood itself does cause deadly poison. As long as that's what procs it. If it's just the weapon that procs it with it on there, then it's just regular poison. So it's like a little bit of variety on there. Oh no, Howell, I'm not calling for it to be nerfed. I just think that I... The whole reason why I don't use it is I find that it just kind of trivializes the game. I don't like using it because of that purpose, the aspect of it. If other people want to use it, that's fine. I'm not saying it needs to be nerfed. I just will say that it is definitely overtuned. And don't like it because of that. It's fun to use for a little while, but... After that, I'm just over it. No sword from you? Bastard. What do you guys think? I think don't give it is the answer here, right? If you want her talisman. Granted that her talisman that she gives you is not like useful for like 99% of players, but I think don't give is the answer. What up, Plumbus? I know that you have done but I wish to all kill me. I thought that free me. I know okay. I'm sorry, Raya, for what I'm about to do. I'm sorry, Raya. Thank you, my champion, mother. Josh, no, no, you monster. I want data cards. Whoa, dude. What do you mean? What do you mean, no? <laughs> That's the whole reason I did the quest, man. She'll still give it to you? Yeah, but I want it now. Does that really make me a monster? Yes? Alright, well, fuck me then. <laughs> Listen. She wanted free of this world, alright? She is transcended to somewhere higher now, okay? She's on to better things. You 
give me my two bucks back. <laughs> and we drop in. This is how you get the uh, dagger talisman, by the way, which if you're building a build specifically around daggers, like critical hits, this is where you want to go. Hey! All right. Chill. Dagger Talisman. It gives you 15% more critical hit damage. So whenever you're stabbing someone in the back or if you parry them and get a repost, that's... That much more extra damage for you. Good job, dude. I'll never forgive you. Yeah, people forgave me when I killed Latena, so I think we'll be fine. Do I recommend Lies of P? Yeah, it's a great game. I never forgave you for that. You forgot all about it, though, didn't you? You forgot all about it until this came up in conversation. Listen, man. In all of my playthroughs that I've not killed them, in fact, a lot of my playthroughs where I kept them alive and helped them throughout their entire way, it's fine, dude. I'm doing things differently in all my playthroughs, all right? I am taking every road imaginable. There are not many roads that I've not traveled yet, okay? And these are just some of them. Okay? This is the the Josh Feed multiverse in Elden Ring, okay? This is just one game with multiverses that I am covering, okay? We are experimenting, hitting on every possibility, and living gloriously all the while, okay? It's fine. You can pick any one of my playthroughs, and that can be your own personal canon. That can be your, your Josh Feed multiverse head canon. That is you, okay? Still no sword from these guys. I hope Melon comes and hunts you on the DLC. I hope so too, man. I'm going to have playthroughs where she has every uh, every possibility to come and hunt me. If that's what she wants to do, I'm all for it. I hope it does happen. Except the problem with this is, is she doesn't say that until after you defeat Radabeast as the, after you choose the Flame of the Frenzy ending. So I highly doubt she actually will, which is very unfortunate. We'll never actually see the ending of that whole story, I'm sure. Why do you want that? I'm just collecting shit, man. I'm a collector. <laughs> Hashtag justice for Latena. God damn it, dude. Hey, I just want this spear. I'm not actually here to fight you yet. I will see you later, my dude. Let's go here now. It's time to go underground. Does that armor set give you some buff to your build? Only the helmet does. The helmet gives me 10% extra damage against... Um, I'm sorry, after something is poisoned for 20 seconds. Combine that with the talisman that does the same and I'm getting 30% extra damage. It's actually quite large. That's what she said. Yo, I just remembered. I did not get, um... I didn't go the other way to get the, uh... B -b -b Lionel set. Where the hell is that? I can't remember. Oh, there it is. I found it. The omen killer out here, too. Come here. I'm gonna parry you. I'm gonna parry you so hard. Oh, why do you gotta sneeze on me, dude? What the f... Okay, I didn't parry him so hard. I promise I tried, though.
Can I kill Millicent as well? I haven't been to that part of the game yet. Oh, my dude just flattened me. The parry timing with the curved sword is so awkward, man. <laughs> I have so much work to do on that. What do you have a rockhead? That is mushroom. And the deathbed dress. Okay, hold on. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold up. Did that rat just climb a fucking ladder? Is that what I just witnessed? How the hell? The rats are down there. Oh, you know what? It could, it could jump it. Never mind. It, it could jump it. We just saw it jump. All right. It didn't climb the ladder. Sorry. I thought I thought for a moment that I, that was going crazy. Watch. This guy's going to jump up too. There he is. Okay. <laughs> I thought this guy freaking climbed it. I was about to lose my shit. <laughs> Since when do they climb ladders? Damn it, dude. You know what's insane? The amount of damage that these guys do. Cool guys don't look at explosions moment, right? I've already killed this guy out here, but what is this item that I never grabbed? Golden arrow. Never grab that item either, but I don't think it's anything good. Okay, anyway. Back to the task at hand, going underground. Yo, Plumbus32 becoming a member of the channel. Thank you a ton, man. I really appreciate it. Very nice of you, dude. black bow I've already got it yo guys reminder make sure to leave a like on the video it does support what I do I really appreciate it thanks for doing it man thousand hours i've never seen a rat jump like that i've seen him do it once in a great while but it happens so rarely that i forgot it happens i have the lantern on too many you see that bright glowing thing on my hip? That's the lantern. What part of the lore do rats serve? Um, great question. Do they need to serve the lore though? Are they not just another being in the world? Hey, don't mind me. I'm just gonna pick up these uh, bloody manchettes and stuff. Thank you. Oh my damages, sirs. What the f 
Okay, these rats are overtuned. <laughs> what the damage was that? Just finished your entire Elden Ring randomizer mod playlist and inspired me to put another 200 dash hours into the game. Nice, White Wolf. Enjoy your time with it, dude. Sick. Very cool, man. Ah, shit. I forgot, dude. I never talked to... What's his face here? The Dung Eater. The Poop Snacker. The Fecal Feaster. I went down there specifically to go to his ever jail. Or I'm sorry, his jail cell, rather. But I forgot to speak to him, so he wouldn't be there. You have felt what can certainly might was a brief go and untrapped in it. What are you doing on your physic flask? Dexterity and strength tears. There we go. Now we can go back. Now that I recalled that. Do, 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 yo, Lewis Bullen, thank you for 10 months of membership. Love what you do, Josh. Thanks, man. Can you explain the build a little? I'd like to try it out. I have curved swords. I have four curved swords, in fact. I've got these two. And then I've got these two. Three of them are bandits' curved sword. One is a scavenger's curved sword. Two of them are for poison. Two of them are for bleed. Specifically, the big reason I'm doing this is for this ability right here called Poison Moth Flight. Not only does it apply deadly poison, but also if the target has already poisoned when I hit them, it does a big explosion of damage very similar to a, a bleed proc, a hemorrhage. It's something that's just kind of fun to include in my combo of damage. I've also got Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength. And a couple other incantations, including a rot one, the, the dragon rot one. Just to add a little bit of extra flavor to, to the build overall. Just making it quite versatile with basically three different status effects to apply against my enemies. And the big reason why I wanted to try this out is to see what how, how effective it could be. The idea is to poison my enemy, let the poison do its damage... And when I do poison an enemy, because of the helmet I'm wearing and one of my talismans, I'm getting a total of 30% extra attack damage against my targets. I could have hit that side of grace there, but I forgot. So for 20 seconds, I get 30% extra attack damage after I poison or rot one of my enemies. So for about 15 or 16 seconds, I'll do every little bit of attack damage that I can against my targets after they're poisoned, and then end the entire combo with Poison Moth Flight for a big explosion of damage at the very end. And overall, the result is several thousands of damage. The most damage I've dealt with the overall combo in a matter of like 20-ish seconds is 10,000. Which, as my character gets stronger, it'll be able to do more and more over time. Really? Are you what? Blah, 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 blah. What? Are you what? I completely disagree. How the hell did that even hit me? It went by me. One or two new tips are tips for a new Elden Ring player. Uh, explore a lot. There are lots of cool things that many players miss in this game because they just don't explore. Instead, they'll look up a guide for the main path and then just stick to that and then wonder why they missed out on so much stuff. The game doesn't hold your hand and allows you to explore in any direction that you want to. I would suggest doing that because it makes the game shine bright. What level am I currently? 109. Just to be healthy. 
And then the second tip I would give is don't get frustrated too much. The game is meant to be difficult. Just embrace it. Understand that each death is something that you can learn from. As long as you're learning from your deaths, you're only going to get better and better at the game. Most of this game and being good at it is just knowledge about how everything works. You can't really go into a boss room and expect to win every every time, right? Expecting to go into a boss fight and win on the first attempt is just very... It's not a good mindset to have. Sure, there might be instances where you do first try it, but if you go in and you've never seen that enemy before, you shouldn't expect to do well against it. It's a learning process. So try not to get frustrated. Expect to die and learn from it. I understand your suggestion, but it's been three hours. I cannot beat a Draconic Tree Sentinel. Ah, uh, man, I wish I... You know, I do have a guide for Draconic Tree Sentinel on my YouTube channel, if you'd like to check that out. But overall, my best advice for Draconic Tree Sentinel will be this. Try to only attack when you're on its shield side. If you try to attack when you're on its uh, weapon side, it's going to hit you a lot and often. Overall, though, if you stay on its shield side when you attack, you'll be much more successful because the shield is actually very easy to dodge. And a lot of the time, because of the way the shield works, you'll be able to land several attacks and then dodge and then land several more attacks because oftentimes it will not run away from you. Stay on its shield side as much as you can before you attack it, and you'll see a lot more success. God damn it, dude. I hate Revenants so much. This is not an exaggeration. I would rather fight Draconic Tree Sentinels than Revenants. Granted, a room full of Draconic Tree Sentinels would be an absolute nightmare, so maybe that's not completely true. But say if, like, that entire room was empty aside from a singular Draconic Tree Sentinel, I would be better off. Fuck that slug. <laughs> Ultimate technology. Thank you for the Twitch Prime, dude. I appreciate it loads. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it, dude. Welcome to WrestleMania. Oh, I thought I had another second to uh, dodge there, but I guess not. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. Well, that was a bad time. God damn. Why do you think the DLC costs so much? Is it going to be that big? Because it's almost like buying a new game. I mean... It is probably going to be one of the largest expansions that you'll ever play. But I guess that just depends on your own trust of From Software. Did you enjoy the base game? Did you enjoy the base game enough to want to play more of it? then yes, it's worth your time. It's worth your money. 
I would say it's worth, you know, spending that extra 40 USD to get it. But again, the value of this type of stuff is going to be individual. It's going to be person to person. Everyone is going to want different things out of it. Whether or not it's going to hit that for you is ultimately up to you after you play it. I can't guarantee that. I'm not from, from software, of course. But for me, as someone that enjoys Souls Likes a lot, I already know it's going to be worth it for me. So that 40 USD is going to be a good time well spent. And good money well spent. So let's say you hit a wall at a boss. Is it lucrative to farm mobs to level it up before, let's say, a boss? Or just die a lot and learn the moves? Uh, the answer to that is a mix of both and what you're willing to do, Soul Sticks. If you are the type of person that is willing to invest time to learn, then I would say take time to learn. If you are someone that just wants to beat the boss as quickly as possible and you want to be more effective at things overall, then I would say take time to farm up a little bit so you can do that. It just depends on what you want as a player, as an individual, what you're looking to do. I'm the type of guy where I enjoy a challenge, and so I go out of my way to be challenged. I like experimenting, making different builds, and overall fighting bosses in different ways. And so that's what I ultimately do. I have never farmed levels, just because, you know, that's what I like to do overall. But you as a player might not be the same way. It's up to you. Both are viable ways to play. God damn it, dude. This guy's kicking my ass. Arg. Will you die? It just depends on what you want, man. You know, at the end of the day, every player is different. You just have your own thing going on, so you need to figure out what it is that you want to do. Yo, Devin, thanks for the prime, dude. What's up, man? What's up, man? Yo, guys, if you're in Twitch chat, say hello. Mags VG, that's my brother. Say hello to my brother, please. Thanks for the prime, dude. Oh, it's kind of weird you can't pull the lever while crouching. Very odd. Again, can't open the door while crouching. Very odd. I'm a wild player at heart, that's why. Seems like I need to approach Elden a bit different, fun nonetheless. Yeah, I mean, the beauty about this game and other Souls likes is you get to decide how you want to play. There is no wrong way to do it. As long as it's a mechanic that exists in the game, then you're fine to do it. Obviously, there can be things that people would consider cheesy versus other people wouldn't consider it cheesy. It's just... You can make your own definition. At the end of the day, you are the owner of your license for the game, so you can play however it is that you want to. Hold on. This is Sparta moment. Get him out. Get him out. What are you up to, Dev? You can pull a lever while crouching. Sounds like a euphemism. I kind of wanted to say it's like a euphemism for me doing your mom, but I didn't know if that was too far. I don't know, man. Just another bad joke moment with Josh. And that's the way that I generally want to go, but I can't remember what's down here, so let's figure it out. It's never too far? Okay. Love to hear that. Oh, you know what? It's going to be uh, an Ash of War. I'm sorry, uh, Summon Ash, rather. The Nomad. Kind of worthless, to be honest. But yeah, just a bit, like, everyone has their own personal def definition of value. For me, when I spend money on video games, 
it depends on like my overall experience with the game. I know a lot of people will weigh like every dollar should be like an hour of entertainment. And while that can be a way to define it, I think that a better experience or a better weight of that dollar would be like how much you personally enjoyed that experience overall. Like, was it a good time to you? Did when you played Elden Ring, did you like it? Did you really like it? Would you say maybe it's like a seven or eight or even higher out of 10 for you? Then I would say the expansion is probably going to be something worth your time. But again, it's individualized. It's what you like to do as a person. There are plenty of people that just do not like this game and consider the DLC a waste of their money, which is fair. That's their opinion and their money. For me, the DLC is an absolute no-brainer buy. Right? I think it's pretty obvious. Just let you know your brother murdered Raya for a charm. Why do you gotta rat me out like that, man? What the fuck? <laughs> Oh, nice parry, Josh. Good job, dude. You stupid. Oh, God! I almost died. And I would say right there is a great example of how effective poison can be. Poison kept the damage going and ultimately was the final tick of health on him in a moment when he was about to hurt me a lot. Pretty good. Your actual brother or brother from the streets? A little bit of both, I think. But my actual biological brother, yeah. It's him. It's him in the flesh. That's currently Rockstar's excuse for wanting to price games higher, so I don't think I can agree with dollar per hour. See, I used to think that way myself. I don't think that way anymore. I really actually do not like that sentiment at all anymore, but a lot of people still do price it that way. So, oh, shit. It's just an individualized thing at the end of the day. How are you not falling off? What? They just murdered me twice in one life. Did you see that? Did you see what just happened to me? They they killed me, and then they did another bleed build-up proc and, like, completely eliminated my body from existing. It's kind of messed up. God damn it. Now my body's down there, too. Imps, man. There you go. Very good. Listen, man, I'm just here to open up the path, you know? I'm just here to open up the path. Don't murder me. All 
All right, that'll get him off my ass for a moment. Okay, I... I hate you. I want you to know that. I just want you to know that. I hate you. That guy's gone forever. See ya. See ya. Does From Software ever miss with a DLC? No, I think every expansion they've put out has been absolute gold. I have never disliked any expansion that they've ever put out. Is there anything else cool down here? I don't... Th I don't think there is. I got a bite. I fell down the wrong hole. Old Hunters was kind of trash, though. Yeah, it was terrible at the ESC. Absolutely god awful. Honestly, how dare they? You know? Well, I can't climb the ladder because you decided to send a million projectiles at me, so thanks, dude. I guess. I went Beyblade mode. What's the deal with Dung Eater? Honestly, man, the deal is he likes to eat shit. That's that's the deal. It's right in the name. No, but honestly, uh, he has, he has like a really, he really does have a good goal, but the way he goes about uh, trying to attain his goal is god awful. So what, what he really wants to do is he wants everyone in the world to be an omen. He wants everyone to become a fell omen, and that is his ultimate goal because he views the omen as something not nearly as bad as a lot of people in the current state of the world do. In fact, at one point in this universe, the omen was considered a blessing, believe it or not. But, for whatever reason, the Golden Order changed all that and has decided that it's actually a curse. And that's why all the fell omen are down here. They're looked down upon. So, the Dung Eater has decided that he wants everyone else to have the curse. In order for everyone to have the curse, essentially he needs to give them the seedbed curse. Which, from my understanding, the way he goes about that is quite disgusting. He, uh, befouls them, for lack of a better way to say it, and then kills them. So that way they are reborn with the curse. So the ultimate goal is good because he wants everyone to be considered equals, but the way he goes about it is absolutely disgusting and vile. All right, Moog, come here. I rolled too early.
Can you stop, sir? You guys remember my first playthrough? Those of you that were here for that? When I spent hours trying to parry this guy, only to learn that eventually that you cannot parry him? We did all the science, man. We did hours and hours of testing. Is that the fake Moog? Yes. Not real Moog, by the way. You guys know what? I forgot to get my fourth talisman slot. I just remembered. I just remembered. Uh, let me load this up, Elgrenon. Let me get this emote going for you. <laughs> Mocking sponge. All right, there you go. There you go. Oh my god, a secret. Can he not be poised? Oh, we absolutely can. I did once in that fight. Actually, considering his size, he's not so hard to uh, stagger overall. <laughs> Come over here, man. So there's a bunch of items hidden under these little, like, makeshift lean-tos. You actually have to lure these guys into breaking them, and then you can grab the items. Like that, a Nomadic Merchant set. One of my favorite armor sets in the entire game. But also, don't sleep on them. They do massive amounts of damage. <laughs> it's kind of scary. Dun, 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 dun. Ow. I'm dead. The madness. Why is it a fake one in the sewer in the first place? He is guarding the, uh, the entrance, the hidden entrance at that to the three fingers. In fact, you can't even make it down here until after you kill Morgoth, because right here in this archway, Morgoth has a, a in, 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 words, an incantation placed there that seals you out. So in order to make it down here, you have to kill Morgoth first. After you kill Morgoth, all you have to do is uh, defeat the fake Moog, and then from there, you're good to go. Do the thing, man. Oh, your damage is nuts. And yes, if you are wondering, these are all indeed merchants. All those guys that sell items to you, like stone sword keys out in the world, they are these guys. miss the uh, fingerprint shield? Where is the fingerprint shield? I know it's somewhere down here. Damn it. Okay, I'm dead. Good job. Oh, 
Can you elaborate on that armor set? As in the one I just found, would you like to see it? I can put it on for you real quick, if you've never seen it before. Nomadic Merchant Sets. Where is it? Okay, there's that. I don't think it has uh, any part for the hands, but yeah. That's the Nomadic Merchant set. Very cool. Very stylish. Very nice. What do you guys think? Do we leave it like this now? Do, 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 do. Nice voice crack, huh? Check out that cape. Not bad. Yeah, dude. Not bad. I think the fingerprint shield is on one of these levels down its own individual path at the end, but I can't recall exactly which, which one it's at. I do not remember. The Mushroom Merchants. Weren't these people persecuted for something they were innocent of, so they called for Shabiri for revenge, but it reduced them to this? Ah, uh, that sounds about right, yeah. Shield is lower after the platforming? Okay. I can't remember which uh, which is the right way. It's been so long since I've done this. That one. And I'm dead. God damn it. I can't remember the path down here, man. It has been a long time. When was the last time I even did this? This might sound weird, but I think it's been upwards of a year since I've last done this. I used to do this every playthrough, even if I didn't plan on using the ending. That was almost bad. And it is bad. Goodbye, runes! It's been fun! <laughs> Fighting with so many runes? Runes are replaceable. It's really not a big loss. There's so many bosses I have yet to kill. It's fun. <laughs> tri tri triple kill. Boink, boink, boink. Boink. God! Where the hell are my character's legs at? Why did I get a baby jump? Do I like PvP in this game? No. I am of the opinion that peer-to-peer -peer connections for any type of player versus player activity is trash. I've never been a fan of it at any points, and I'm not going to be a fan of it now just because it's a From Software game. Holy... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Endogape account. What is that? Five now? Is that five? Doing pretty good, huh? Okay, now, do we want to jump there, roll there, jump over to that, make it over there, we roll off that one. Okay, I think... Yeah, I should have... I should have dropped off on that side. I'm seeing that now. Let's see if I can make this. Okay, I can. I went the wrong way again. Oh, no, I didn't. I think we're okay. We roll onto this. And then I think on this one, we just straight up run off. And then on this one, we roll. Oh, my God. Hyper roll. On this one, we roll as well. We grab this. And then down this way is the shield. Yes, I recall now. I'm taking this. This guy's in a bit of a... A daze. I remembered. I remembered how to do it. Now we need to lure this guy over here. I don't remember what this item is, but... Come help me get it. Come on, then. Hey, man, the only way to uh, attack me is if you come this way. I know it's a crazy concept, but I believe in you. Come on. Come on, man. You can do it. Good job. Oh, it's just Mikola's needle note. <laughs> it's not even anything good. Okay. All right, dude. And then there's just this. Wow, we look. It's Hayetta. Enjoy your note. Hell yeah, dude. I love my note. Can quit out and then trap to trap then restart yeah i would just rather show how it's done legitimately so people can know though because that's the intended way now here's the thing when this game first came out people saw this door right and they're like how the hell do i open it i have no idea because it just says you know nothing like there's just nothing here it's just a weird ass wall obviously you can see the fingerprints on there and if you've been paying attention to anything in this game then you'd be like, hmm, there must be something involving the Flame of the Frenzy here. But, if you actually listen to what Hayata says here, if you do if you do the quest, and a lot of people just completely miss this, if you did her quest, she literally says, divest yourself of possessions. Which means, get naked. Get naked and the three fingers will welcome you. And there you go. But also, there's a hidden path here. This is one out of two ways into the deep root depths, if you did not know. In here, I believe, is a rune arc. And then after the rune arc, secret path, and then boom, deep root depths. Look at that. Granted, you're at the very top of the deep root depths, right? But this is directly underneath the city, and it leads all the way down to the old crucible tree. We're not doing that right now. We're not doing that one right now. Okay. So what else was I going to do? Oh, right. Um, I do need to respec really quickly to do a thing. It all makes sense now. It's connected. Yup. Now, the reason why I didn't get the whole thing going right now is because I want to do some experimenting when the DLC comes out. I want to see if anything changes with different, like, different pathways. And so I'm going to be holding on to that site of grace for the future. No. 
We need 37 intelligence here. Look at that health bar, god damn. Okay, now that we have that... Oh, I just realized, um... Oh no, it's before we even have to fight anything, right? We should be fine. Let me go... Here? Fire your spec and use items to boost. All the items that I have that would boost me would still leave me one short. So no, I cannot just boost. I am respecking for a reason. With all the stuff that I have going on, it would put me at 36, not 37. Which is what I need. It's almost like I know what I'm doing. A little bit. <laughs> Do I need a staff to cast this or is it via seal? It should be via seal, right? Yeah. Figured to be used <laughs> you'd be used to being a little short. Listen, bitch. Listen, bitch. You right. I'm fat rolling. Hey guys, isn't that a nice statue of Radagon? Wow. Wow, guys, isn't that a nice statue of Marika? Radagon is Marika. Marika is Radagon. What the? F Hello there, Crucible Knight. Come and get it, dude. Come and get it. You gonna... I need flat ground to fight you. I'm not fighting you on a stairwell. My damage here is gonna be so low because I, <laughs> I don't have any dexterity. <laughs> oh! Oh my god, who the hell are you? Alright, you better not cast any shield bullshit on this Crucible Knight, alright? Ow! Ow! I'm so screwed! Okay, dude. I forgot this guy existed over here. I forgot. There we go. Problem solved. Parry timing is always a little strange with this. Oh. Danger. You feeling a little sick? Man, what an edge, right? What an absolute edge. <laughs> B 
barrier of gold. Where, oh where, do we jump down without dying? Right here. The old Bolt of Grand Sacks. Hey, serious question. You've thought about fucking off? I'm sorry, that was rude of me. Can you guys tell that I got a good night of sleep last night? I'm feeling still quite energized. It's nice. Mm. Right. Respec again. That it does, Overkill. That it does. No. Alright, this was at the old 50. We had... Ah, shoot. Hold on. I'm going to change this up a little bit. What do I need to cast these other spells? What is it, like 15 arcane? I kind of screwed myself up being able to cast them earlier in the game. 13, 12. Okay, so 17 faith, 13 arcane. Is it time? No. Very good. Shit, didn't I need more strength? No, I didn't. Why did I think I needed more strength for something? The mushroom merchant. The mushroom merchant. Okay. I needed to do something else, too. But I can't remember what that something else is. I guess I can go speak to, uh... Corrin again. Oh, that's right. Morning Star. I think that's what I needed more strength for. But the Morning Star, I always two hand anyway, so that's not as important. I wanted 12 strength for that, but I just don't need it because I always two hand it whenever I use it. So that's fine. Oh, you know what it was? Getting my fourth talisman slot. I also did, I did go to Dung Eater's cell, yeah, I did. The thing. Um. She didn't give it to me. Which means I could probably buy it from these crowns over here. Put the feather cape for jump attacks? No. Alright, we got that. What other talisman do I want here? Hmm. Oh, you know what? Um, 
I know later on, after I take out Alexander at the end of his quest, I'm going to want his talisman for Poison Moth Flight. But that's not until much later. Uh, don't really know what I want to do here. I guess we'll go with a uh, final pit of chain attacks just for now. Claw. No, I only use jump attacks to apply the poison. Once the poison is applied, I don't do jump attacks anymore. That's not an overall part of my combo, aside from building up poison. That's the only time I do that, guys. But okay. Um, let's go speak with Corrin. Dex Talisman? Nah. My, my dexterity is 55, which we're pretty close to the soft cap anyway. Diminishing returns and all. Yeah, Black Crystal Arcane, uh, Arcane helps with that. Arcane will be the stat that I build up more after dexterity is 60. Nice job, Josh. Oh! What was the... What was that lingering hitbox? Excuse me? Excuse me? Arcane boost item discovery? Yes. But it also boosts your application of poison and bleed. With a delay, dude, lingering hitboxes are such a blight. <laughs> I've never liked them. What up, Fox? The only time a lingering hitbox should be a thing is if it's like some type of like status effect, maybe? Like a swirl of, I don't know, like lightning or something, I guess. But just like pure physical damage lasting that long is always strange to me. What the range was that? Oh my god. Oh my god! He just slammed me through the ground for a second there. That was nuts. Neither of them dropped their weapon. Sag. Hey, Corin, did you know? Oh, yes, the mountain have to call. Oh, you know what? I gotta, I gotta talk to him first. Hey, buddy, did you know that Marika is Radagon, and Radagon is Marika?
Very good. What on earth did you do to the master? Well, not that our master's finger moves again, resuming his cogitation. More than good enough for me. So I'd like to pass this on to you. A glimpse into the heart. A glimpse into the heart of the Golden Order. To think, or at least how it's so sad. Do you have a foe? Well, in truth, it matters. I am mean. Okay, next time we'll see them is in the mountaintops. On the bridge next to a somber nine. Why am I still in combat? Apparently they were targeting me. Okay. Um. Dung Eater. The old Dungy Boy. Where do I find him next? He's going to be down there in that little lake area. Or the moats. Braddock on his marka. How do the kids happen? Great question. One that I'm sure everyone has their own several theories about. But most likely probably has something to do with the uh, the greater will. Most likely is just something to do with some type of god-based power. Alpha goes hard. Hey, thanks, man. I'm the mushroom merchant. I'm out here selling poison and rot. That's what I'm vending. That didn't rot him. Interesting. <laughs> what the hell, man? Just rot. I want to rot you. Please rot. Also, screw this crab right now. You mother bitch. I hate you so much. Crab's gonna die any moment. It's fine. There we go. Can we talk about the mosquitoes out here, though? Can we talk about that for a moment? See, that's all I wanted. That's all I wanted to do. That's it. This whole damn time. But also, I missed something. This is not Boggart's Blackguard guy. And that's kind of a problem. Why and how is Dung Eater in Round Table Hold? Because he is indeed a Tarnished, as is introduced at the introduction of the game. That intro cutscene, he is described as a Tarnished who lost grace. And the Round Table Hold is offering as a, uh, I don't know if a base of operations is the right word, but basically a place where Tarnished who lost grace are able to go. 
need to buy one crab from Boggart for him to appear here. In my past playthroughs, I never bought anything from him to be here. I think I just missed dialogue. I guess we'll see if he's still in the Urnia. A sanctuary of sorts, I guess, yeah. Hey, look, I guess you get to survive, buddy. His body is locked below the capital and his soul is at the round table. Yeah, it's it's a weird explanation, but essentially it's just like being able to separate oneself from that, I guess. I don't know. I've never actually done this. I've never actually progressed that quest and not had Blackguard die. This is quite interesting. I do have four seedbed curses, right? Or is it three? I've only got three. So I need two more. I know there's one in the Hay League tree. Where would I... Is there two in the Hay League tree? Why am I thinking there's two there? That doesn't make sense to me. Is there two? There are two? Okay, yeah. Okay, good. There are two there. Good. That's all I need then. But I'm good. But okay, guys, I'm going to call it a night here. It is beyond 9 p.m. I'm going to call it a night. I'll be back again tomorrow, 4 p.m. Eastern time to pick up where we left off. But before you go, don't go anywhere just yet. I want to show you guys something once again. Listen, this is something that is very important to me. This is my YouTube homepage. I recently worked on this and organized it so that way my content is much more accessible to you all. This is, as you can see, youtube.com forward slash the Josh feed. That's all you have to type in in order to access this page. That's just my homepage. If you subscribe to me, you can just see this right away. Whenever I'm live streaming, you'll see my stream at the top, but also you can see all of my content, all my recent videos, all of my content throughout the past years. I have it all separated. So the year 2024, it'll show all my playlists for the year 2024. The year 2023, it shows all of my playlists of everything that I've put out on my channel in the year 2023. There's a lot of content out there. A lot of stuff. Year 2022, there's a lot of stuff there too. Look at all these games. Look at all these games I've played on my channel that people don't know about. Look at all this. So, if you're looking for something to watch, consider going to my YouTube homepage and taking a look at all this glorious content for your eyes to feast on. Alright? Especially the most recent videos. The most recent videos could use your love. Look at this. Look at this. Listen, I'm not... I'm not saying that you have to watch it, but if you're interested in more video games or if you just want to see what other type of content I put out there, you should go give it a look, especially the last couple videos. I even have another Elden Ring video that I put out recently. It's the Every Boss Without Dying video. It covers every single boss in the game in one video. Shows how I took them down. Go take a look. Is a Dolmen playthrough on it? There was only one Dolmen video, but it's on one of these somewhere. It's somewhere out there. Can't remember what year it was, but it is on my channel somewhere. But anyways, guys, thank you for tuning in. Much love to you all. Thank you for being here, and I will see you tomorrow. Until then, be excellent to each other. Go watch videos on my channel. Bye.